All right, fine, I lied, all right? Fine, fine, I lied. I mean, I didn't mean to lie. I didn't, I didn't think. What did you lie about? Well, I what? said... What are you talking about? I said what I said was last episode with Quincy Wilson was the end of the summer series. But oh, just sure but just before, I mean, just before the door is to close, just before the door is ready to close, looky, looky, looky who we have here. He was just walking down the street. Well, he was, yeah, he was just coming down the street. He said, hey, psst, hey Garrett, <laughs> you got a couple minutes. I know practice doesn't start really till about tomorrow, so could you get us in here and... <laughs> Yeah, we worked I mean, it out. I mean, yeah. I mean, he was, he was just walking. Just walking. Again. No, I fib. It, this is an historic, historic episode of Three Guys Before the Game for a bunch of different reasons. This is 475. I'll tell you why it's historic coming up. Episode 475 is brought to us by, hit it, the five folks at the Burdette Camping Center. They happen to be the only, the only forever warranty dealer in the state of West Virginia. Visit BurdetteCamping.com. That means you buy anything from them. RV, hauler, travel trailer. You buy it from them, and the warranty lasts forever, which is an extremely long time. BurdetteCamping.com. Three guys also brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. You know, Hoppy, sometimes people try to get into your networking on your computer. Oh, yes. You know that, right? I'm aware of that. You're aware of that? Well, you go to experience with that. Yes, you do. You go to Comax Business Systems, folks. They'll remote monitor. They'll give you the IT support that you need. Visit them at ComaxWV.com. We'll talk a lot more about this later, but we had our weekend visit, and we may have hit a GoMart or two along the way. Today's program brought to us by GoMart. You go for good times. You go for GoMart. You got to get the rewards card. I went in there, used my rewards card, coming back home on Saturday. What a 62-pound Slim Jim, 31-pound Reese cup, and a hundred skittles, and a 120-yard-long freeze pop. A hell of a deal. Go for good times. Go for Goma. Oh, by the way, you can save a lot on gas as well. Their gas cheaper than other places. Just FYI. Well noted. Yeah. yeah. We noted that because we check gas prices on our way to and from our destination. Yeah. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. You know, it seemed to me as though Garrett's been on a pont. You ever been on a pontoon? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why big, that pontoon guy. Times, big, big pontoon guy. Big pontoon Florida. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That'd be a I'll good tell you day. what, this was a great weekend for pontoons. Oh, we went over Beautiful Summersville Lake, Lake on our way there when we when we were heading up the road going toward uh, to make the turn there at the Go-Mart Netty. And uh, we went over by Summersville Lake. You look down there, it was just like a plethora of pontoon boats. So if you need one. The premier pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia is Lou Wendell Marine Sales. They're located in St. Albans. They sell the Avalon pontoon boats and so much more in business for over 40, 40 years, like 40-plus years. Visit them at LouWendellMarineSales.com. What are you short? What's that? I, I feel like we're in a band. I feel like I've, we've been together since Friday. <laughs> well, we have. I feel like we've been on tour, and I, like we're always together. You got a few hour break on Sunday, and it's back <laughs> at it. Like now Playing we're back another to, set. Got another gig tonight. Got another gig today. We're it, back together. It did feel like we'll talk all about our trip to Greenbrier <laughs> County Chicago. later on. Later on. <laughs> later on. Levisy. Later on in the pro- Quinwood. Later on in the program. Rupert. But here is why this is an historic. This is why this is an historic what? edition of Three Guys Before the Game with Garrett Green of the Mountaineer football team. Because we have recently celebrated the second year anniversary of NIL. It was in July, July 1, two years ago. So now we're 25 months in. And Garrett becomes, <laughs> Garrett becomes the first ever NIL sponsored guest of three guys before oh, the game. It, it, wow. Nice. Isn't that. that right? Yeah. yeah. I'm honored. So no, we're honored. <laughs> no, we're honored. And and of course, as you as everyone knows, we play by the rules. Yep. Right? We play the, we play by the rules. And so Garrett's appearance on Three Guys Before the Game is presented by our guy, fine looking Phil yep. at Daniel's men's store of Morgantown. Selling quality men's clothing for over fifty years. 
Phil hasn't been there all 60 50. now. Is 60. It's... In fact, the 60th anniversary sale going on right now at what? Daniels. Oh, really? You hustle over. You better hurry. You better hurry. How long does that last? I might have come to an end yesterday, but you better hurry over. <laughs> might get a couple days of extension. No way. Hurry up. Time out. Time, Gary, you ever you ever call timeouts? Or always got to be Neil on the sideline calling the time. You ever call one? Uh, you know, if, if I'm if I'm feeling good enough about it, I'll, okay. I'll call it. So we're gonna call one right now. <laughs> we're gonna call one right now, and here's a timeout. I think Phil will extend that for three guys. Listeners. If if you say I'm here for the 60th anniversary sale that I heard on three guys, Bim. you got to do a couple buzzwords on this. Yeah. So Garrett uh, Garrett is here. Um, compliments of Daniel's Men's Store of Morgantown, the premier clother of the state of West Virginia. Not only unbelievable suits, which I've seen you styling before, look yeah. very nice. <laughs> very, very. And I heard a birdie told me that when you enter into the stadium this year, when you do the man trip, that yeah. you may you may be threading out from Daniels. Yeah, we may have we may have some special stuff in the works. <laughs> special uh, stuff. From Daniels. So you ever think we'll like see. have you guys <laughs> talked about it in any like you think maybe like one just one game, like top hat, walking stick, and like five pocket watches, no, something no, like that. No. Well, it'd be over the top, maybe. If my mom would allow it, I would wear cowboy boots. Um I would I would bring the boots out, the Python skins, but uh, I'm not sure the the mom would allow that. Yeah, I can understand. <laughs> anyway, so uh, not only unbelievable uh, fine wear, but also the single best, and I say this in all sincerity, the single best selection of the really good-looking, really soft-feeling, the good, good WVU gear. It's all there from Cutterbuck, Peter Millar. Um, he's got a bunch of other people that just – Horn legend. Horn, <laughs> horn legend that he, that he designs – that he designs, and so like you go to other places, you go. I saw someone wearing. I saw Hoppy. I saw Brad wearing it. Like you go. Well, if you're, if you're not in Daniels, you're not getting that, and you can visit them as well. Real so quick, anyway. the other thing, I'm happy to assist when I'm there doing my shift as well each week. So happy to assist customers well, we'll, when they come in if need be. We'll talk more. You think he's kidding? No, he is. So we'll talk more That's about true. that later. That may have, may have a picture someone sent in of you. Um, in operation at Daniels. So working on a mannequin or folding? Well, you were doing some a little okay. bit of both. Okay. Yeah, a little bit of both. Measuring an inseam. Uh, no, that's, okay. I leave that to Phil. Phil does all the measuring. Okay. <laughs> so how are you, man? Doing well. Everything's well, good? Yeah, enjoying, enjoying the last few days of the summer until, you know, we get rolling on tomorrow. So what's the summer been like? How much did you have a chance to get home? So I was... I was home for uh, the 4th of July. That's kind of a staple. You got to go back to Florida. Yes, exactly. The 4th. Um, but I get, came back up here uh, Friday after the 4th, and I've been up here ever since. When you guys went to Germany as part mm -hmm. of the Chambers School program, did, yeah. was that off time for the rest of you guys? Yes. Yeah, so, so that could have been a time where yeah, you were Yeah, that could have been the time that I was home, but, I mean, Europe, Europe's not bad. <laughs> Europe was a good spot to make. Hey, that, hey, yeah. hey, listen, that's a new T-shirt. Can get write that one down. Europe's not bad. Europe's yeah. not bad. Europe's not Europe's bad. Europe's not bad. You were at the Manning uh, Passing Academy. Yep. Yeah. How was that? It was an unbelievable experience. Yeah. Just what was it like being with being with all the the best quarterbacks in college, and then you know all of us collectively getting to learn from the Mannings um, was was a their football royalty. That whole yeah. family is. So just to be in the same space as them, learn things, work out with them was was truly an unforgettable experience. What did you did one one or two things you took away from those guys? Yeah, mainly uh, uh, Peyton. Uh, he uh, he broke down film with us and he kind of went through his week by week process on how That's he nice. prepared for for different teams. So he basically had it as as a progression in the week, not just watching you know a ton of stuff one day and then fizzling out. He had a set progression every single every single day leading up to the game. So that's something that I wrote down and hope to implement this year. Yeah, that's good. Good stuff. Those uh, Peyton's pretty big boy. Yeah, he's, he's a lot bigger, <laughs> lot bigger than me. <laughs> he's a big boy, man. I mean, there's a, there's a few guys that just have that size, like Jeff Hostetler, obviously. Who's yeah. ever, ever how, you've seen mm -hmm. Hostel run a yeah. bit? I mean, look at those guys, and you go like, good golly, big dudes. But anyway, that's pretty interesting. So how how was he? How did he teach you guys how to watch film compared to what you had been doing? He kind of just broke it down kind of as a as a progression like you don't start off max squatting the heaviest weight possible you know you work to it and that's kind of what that's kind of the way he presented it to us that you know you watch you watch all the big stuff first and then as the week gets on you start watching certain cut ups certain cut ups and then by Friday night before the game you're just reviewing notes and getting ready to rock yeah how do you grade yourself as a film watcher compared to how you were when you first came into what you're going to do this coming year 
Yeah, I think when I first came in here, I really didn't know what I was doing. I mean, in high school, I really didn't didn't watch a lot of tape because I was just a better athlete than mm-hmm. everybody. Mm-hmm. But I think learning from learning from Daigie, uh, and then last year learning from JT on, on how they prepared and how they watched film. I think every single year I've gotten gotten better with my preparation. So I'm looking forward to to preparing well this year. Yeah, is that the biggest change for you? Off the field preparation or is on the field right there as well? I think I think they both go hand in hand. Um, I think as I mature and as I've matured over the last few years, you know, obviously my body's changed, which I'm not the biggest guy, but now I'm up to like 203. Um, and then also when my body matures, my mind's also maturing. So I'm learning more about more so about what defense is doing more so than our offense because our offense really hasn't changed yeah. in, in three years. So learning more about defense, how to prepare for them, and how to attack them. So you feel like you know your side of things. But, okay, so everybody always says it's so fast when you first arrive. Yeah. Athletes are bigger, faster, stronger, and the yep. game is moving so fast. You're starting to feel that now, how much it's slowed for you looking over the defense? Yeah, you know, in 2020, that was my second spring practice, and I felt like I was drinking through a fire hose. <laughs> yeah. um, but now, you know, I'm kind of, kind of getting comfortable with, with all the guys and, you know, being able to, to c- command the offense and control all the guys. Mm-hmm. I, I feel good about it. So here's my perception of watching you. I'd like to get your take. Yep. When you first got here and you're running around, and I mean, you're running mm-hmm. around. You're, 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 even when there wasn't a drill going on, you were running around. <laughs> yeah. And you just mentioned the word maturity. Mm-hmm. So look at yourself. If you had the sky cam on you when you first got here, what were you doing and how has, how has that changed? How would you change? You know, I think that I was just, I was just a kid, you know, when I first got here. I mean, I was a – I was a, you're 18, young, young. Yeah, I was 18, 19 years old. Uh, you know, here I am, almost 22. You know, I've, you know, I've gotten wiser. I hope uh, with with my age, but I say age like like I'm that old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all, all due respect to the three of us is what you're saying, right? Yeah, really. we, we, yeah. 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 All due respect we do have close old, but he yeah. looks specifically at you. I mean, I noticed really, that. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. That's okay. I, I kind of shot a glance to everybody, <laughs> but no, I think I think that you know being around a ton of good guys, uh, being around a ton of great coaches. Um, you know, I'd probably say Daggy. Daggy has been the biggest help to to me in my career. Um, you know, watching the way he prepared every single week uh, has really sculpted me into into part of the person and player that I am today. Yeah. Have you always been the alpha dog leader? Because you are. Even mm-hmm. when you first got here, and I know you were saying, like, I do might, might do some things differently. Yeah. Um, I'm, I always viewed you kind of like the, uh, the the wild horse <laughs> that was in the stable and just kind of, like, running around, just, like, yeah. tooling around going, like, going to be a good horse one day, but right now he <laughs> doesn't know where the hell he's going. <laughs> yeah. um, so were you always that guy? I would assume that you were. Little League Baseball, all the way growing up, kids followed you? Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, always, I've always loved, you know, my dad, he always sends me the uh, – he always sends me the uh, poem, "The Man in the Arena." So you know, growing up, I always wanted the ball in my hands. I always wanted, I always wanted my my turn at, at the last last inning, last minute of the game. So it's kind of always been my mentality to to always want the ball in your hand. Yeah, you, you so you you always wanted to be that guy, mm-hmm. but it's very competitive at this level, and it's been uncertain as to when you would be that guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this season will be huge, obviously. Yeah. At what did you have any point? your career thus far where you thought you know it's not gonna work out I gotta leave did you ever think that uh no I never 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 thought to leave leave the program you know this this state means so much to to me and my family uh you know they, they welcomed a kid from Florida a little boy from Florida uh with open arms um and it's really really helped me become the man I am today so I never once thought about leaving you know my dad always just told me just to stick it out and, and good things come to those who wait so you know I waited paid my dues and you know I'm looking forward to it isn't that so true, man? Which is the opposite of the normal thought process nowadays. I mean, kids run into the portal um, with great regularity. And I, I'm so excited for you because I want the story to be written wa- with like, oh, yeah, sometimes it just pays to chill mm-hmm. out, wait, your turn will come, and then you can flourish. Not not that kids shouldn't, but, man, I've just seen through the years – I've seen what red shirts do when kids get a little bummed out that they're going to red shirt for a year. And then I see them when they're in their fourth and their fifth year. And you go like, yeah, that was really, really good. So patience is huge. Where are you at academically? And I got nine degrees, probably a dissertation doctor. I mean, <laughs> when you think Brad med school semester med- left of med school. <laughs> no. So I get my undergrad in uh, December. Okay. Uh, and then I'll start my uh, MBA uh, next January. So I should, should graduate with my MBA uh, from West Virginia in December 24. Good work. Awesome. That, that's the goal. When you sit here the night before practice begins, 
nervous, anxious, excited? Will you sleep tonight? What's the what's the mindset as you get ready to go? <laughs> All know, of it. You know, this this the sun coming out, but it's kind of like kind of like your dog on the first day of dove hunting. You know, he's he's itching, he's itching, ready to go get the birds. So I'm looking forward to to you know getting out there, running around with the guys. You know, putting the ball in the end zone. Um, just. just you know, ready, ready to. We 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 busted our butt this this whole summer, so actually get get to go out and play the game we love. You know, we're all excited, fired up for that. Mm-hmm. Um, what was when the first poll when the poll came out and said West Virginia's picked preseason mm-hmm. fourteen? What was the conversation among you guys? Yeah, I think that ever since West Virginia was a state, it's always kind of been West Virginia against the world. Um, and you know, our team we embrace that, we love that. Um, you know, we we love being the underdogs. Some some of the West Virginia's best teams, they were counted out. They were the underdogs. So we look forward to embracing that and shocking the world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you the starter? <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll we'll see after fall camp. <laughs> Do you think you're the starter? Um, we'll see after fall camp. <laughs> well, God, I mean, Hoppy, I mean. <laughs> Obviously, well, he's going to compete for the job. He's got to enter for the practice job. tomorrow. He's going to compete for the job. <laughs> I, 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 I don't think he's going to go into preseason camp and say, I hope I finish three. I mean, <laughs> obviously, he wants to be the starter, but there's competition. I understand, I understand that. I, mean, I understand that. Big Garrett, one of the great questions is, by Mountaineer fans, is who the starting quarterback will be. I'm just asking what the people want to know. Sure. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. I think he just gave the answer. I'm going to compete to be the starter. Yeah. You you plan. You, you plan to be the starter. Yeah. I mean, that's always the goal, so. No, I'll, I'll check back in with you here in a couple of weeks. <laughs> right, I'll give you my – you text me. I'll, I'll, tell you, you. I'll shoot you text. I, I, I tell you what, if, if he said no, we're going to ask him to leave right then. <laughs> we're going to ask him to leave right then because you you, you got to be that you got to be that guy. Uh, as I said earlier, we're going to bounce around. Yep. Let's talk about the European vacation. It yep. wasn't vacation. It was, you guys, the fifth quarter program mm-hmm. is is pretty wild. Yeah. It, there's a continuing series of – events that you guys build up to mm-hmm. and the culmination of it was that trip uh to germany is it everyone is are the only people that are allowed to get in business school guys no so i'm be. i'm sports management okay is my major okay um, you know you just have to we can yeah we got we got mic button right, right. see that cough button oh, look at that right there oh yeah you there can, you just, you can yeah. press that just <laughs> there good. you go hoppy, um hoppy never uses but no you just have to apply and and do <laughs> <laughs> and do uh do interviews for it but you know it's a phenomenal program and you know truly one of a kind in, in college football what blew your mind like what's the le- what are the give me two lasting memories of you guys over there <laughs> um probably just seeing all the you know i haven't been to, to germany since i was 13 years old so kind of being able to experience germany as, as a real adult you right know, rather than a little kid uh, and then probably seeing santorini um santorini greece is you told me about that before. Like you guys, Greece was like, wow, wasn't it? Oh, it was. It was yeah. phenomenal. Uh, it was unbelievable. What a uh, what a spot. What, what a view. Um, you know, I, I look forward to going back one of these years. So that's when you guys broke apart, right? Yeah. So th- everyone had the opportunity, like after a period of time. Okay, now you guys can go travel around. You, who who went to Greece with you? Uh, it was me, Grayson, uh, and Will Schoonover. Okay. Us three went to to Greece. And so then, Schoonover providing military protection yeah, if needed. He, he provided Heavy military security support. there. That's yeah. excellent. U.S. Yeah. embassy cards, yeah. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I got this. I, I'm totally good, guys. I yeah. got this. He, he, he had the military support. So. <laughs> and so it's just like picturesque, just like wow. Yeah, right? it's just phenomenal. I mean, you look it up and it looks exactly exactly yeah. how it does, you yeah. know, 24-7. Yeah. How about right. food? Best food you had while traveling over there? Best food I had uh, was like a three euro chicken euro uh, in Greece. That was the best food by far. Me and Grayson were loving those. Crushed those? Yeah, we were loving those. Mm-hmm. We probably probably had three, four a day <laughs> while we were there. <laughs> and you told me you guys worked out there. Yeah. You worked out. Okay, so what what was the work? What was it? here? Here we go, Hop. First Mountaineer workout in Greece. What did you do? <laughs> you know we. There's a lot of beaches in Greece, right? Yes. So it was a lot of curls and a lot of abs. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Just showing it off. Did you? Did Just you showing it off? I mean, you guys don't. You didn't look. You guys didn't look like you were from there. So did you get people that were from there? Um, kind of going like, wow, oh, look at those guys, American know, cowboys. The linen shirt may have changed their mind. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was that was the first purchase in Greece. You got one of those. It was the linen shirt, the no collar. Very nice. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's pretty yeah. easy to oh, morph yeah, into unbuttoned. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, completely. 
Now, if you really wanted to become full Greek, you should have had like five cigarettes going at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> them dudes Might like have to impacted <laughs> the condition you know, a little bit. Yeah. Hey, them dudes like to smoke, huh? Did you notice that? A lot of people just kind of lighting up burners all the time. See, Santorini was was really touristy. Okay, so, so more of that. There, yeah. was, there was a lot of Americans there, but when we went to Athens, people were people oh, they were fired were, them up. Yeah, they were. Yeah. It's like, it's like 1956 still there yeah, as far as that yeah. goes. Yeah. How about uh, how about your golf game? You played golf at Pete Dye this week, and you had uh, – who was playing golf with you? Uh, me and Frazier. Uh, we, we were down there how playing. That would be Zach Frazier? Zach that would Frazier. be Zach Frazier. Garrett my, says my Zach roommate. can really hit it, huh? Yeah. Zach, Zach is a phenomenal golfer. Seriously? Uh, First yeah, I've heard of this. Yeah, he's he's phenomenal. Watching him hit a ball is uh, special, even though, Zach, if you're watching, I got you yesterday. <laughs> Oh, oh, so nice. he drove. Hold on, real quick before we get to Frazier, you shot what at Pete Dyke? Put that. So on we were record. playing in, uh, we were playing in like a a charity tournament. So we were just kind of, I mean, we were just we were just hitting the ball around. But like Frazier shot eighty two out there. I've shot eighty one. Really, um, Frazier's that good? I think if me and Frazier played ten times, it'd be five five. I think. So does he hit it like with the club, or does he just throw the ball between his legs? No, he what's it called? He, he, he hits smashed. it with a, he hits he it. He can hit it, and then the, probably the best part of his game is his touch around the greens, which is shocking mm -hmm. for that big of a guy. But his his touch around the green is phenomenal. How would, far he, would he be a guy that could do like anything? Is he one of those guys? Like if y'all went out and played baseball, he could play like first he's, base. He's not better than me at baseball. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, okay. I'll put that on record. Well, I didn't ask him <laughs> better than you. I just because you're a good baseball. I just ask if he could play. Yeah, he would can. He be, he, he could play, play cornhole. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he, he can do it all. Yeah, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wrestle him either. No, I've tried. You don't want. You don't want to do that. <laughs> did now? Did y'all have any side money going on that game? No, we. He's he's been scared to play me because I've been playing some pretty good golf recently. Oh, so he didn't want to go. There. So he, he doesn't want to, to lose the uh, lose right. the ego on the golf course. Be it. Best yeah. round you've ever shot? Um, I shot I shot eighty back home. At, okay. uh, my my home course back home. Tell me, about, I've heard baseball, baseball, obviously your dad. Your dad's still in the game. Yeah, so he's the assistant director of player development for the Brewers okay. in the minor league system. Does that mean he's pop? Is he all? Is he just constantly moving from one spot, or is he based in the – he He's so he, he's based out of Nashville. He just moved to Nashville um, actually this year. Mm -hmm. So he'll, he'll spend a few days in Nashville, and then he'll shoot off to one pop. of the affiliates, whether it's Carolina, yeah. you know, Biloxi, um, wherever, Phoenix. And his career was what? How, he ascended into the game. What was his whole deal? So he uh, he got drafted out of uh, drafted out of high school, um, but then my granddad he's he was a coach at Miami Dade. Um, he's actually he'd never say this, but he's in the American Baseball Coaching Hall of Fame. Wow! Um, for his job there, so my, he wanted to go play for for his dad. So he went there, and then he got drafted, and then he was kind of he always says he was a basketball player. Like basketball is his first love. Larry Bird is is his favorite player. How tall is your dad? He he got the height. Uh, okay. It's like he's like six three. Okay. So he's 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 a big dude. Um, and both of his brothers they played Division one basketball. Oh wow. And you know he loved basketball, but you know baseball was baseball was his calling. So he played thirteen years professionally. Uh, he played five years in the big leagues. Um, and then uh, I think two thousand five, he started coaching for the Brewers, and he's been there ever since. How good were you? At baseball, I mean, how good were you? I was all right. I mean, I, I, I mean, I held my own. <laughs> okay, so if you just said, "I'm, I'm just going straight baseball," where would you have ended up? Uh, I mean, do you want the, you want the real, like what I really think? Yeah, I'd be playing professionally if I would have, would have stuck with baseball. Um, I mean, that, that's what I think, and you know, I obviously have one of the best. Best coaches, uh, right in my household. So right, I, I felt I felt good about baseball. But how torn were you in that path, though? Right, there's obviously a lot of baseball yeah. background right there. How torn were you? How close was it to saying, "I love this game of football, but man, baseball, there's a future there." Yeah, I think baseball was baseball was my first love for sure. Um, but you know, my dad, he was super supportive that. You know, no matter what what sport I was, he he just wanted to be dad. He told me I coach for a living. I don't want to coach you. Mm -hmm. So he was super supportive in my decision. And you know, growing up as a kid, especially in the South, college football is king. So it was always my dream to be to be a college quarterback. You know, it was never really my dream to to play in the play professional baseball. I thought mm -hmm. it was just cool because that's what my dad did. Mm -hmm. But it was always my 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 childhood dream to you know play college football and be a quarterback. Yeah. It's pretty wild. A lot of people dream that. Very few get to actually do it, mm -hmm. and you have. 
and yeah. you are. So that's uh, those are good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those, those those are really yeah, good. Yeah, Dove. So with your dad, I mean, you probably got a lot of locker room access, right? Yeah. So that's guys, I think that's of part of who I am as a person was growing up, growing up in the locker rooms, and I think that's why I kind of carry a sense of confidence and swagger yeah. to myself is that. You know, I saw I saw it from when I was five years old. Like my dad, I remember we spent. He brought me out to instructional league, which is in the fall. It was kind of like in between school starting, and he brought me out there for like three weeks. I was five years old, and he w- wakes up every morning at five thirty, gets to the stadium. So I was I was at the stadium at five thirty. You know, shagging balls. You know, making copies for him, doing whatever. So I think that's part of part of my development as an athlete and player. What's What's the difference? Where is the line between confidence and cocky? You know, I think cockiness is just thinking that thinking that you're going to win just by showing up. And I think confidence is, you know, having prepared, doing your work, paying your dues, and, you know, being confident in all the work that you've put in that, you know, it'll it'll give you a chance for success. Well, he's, a, he's a little too young for those 83 Brewers. <laughs> yeah. Robin Yao, Paul Molitor, Cecil oh, yeah. Cooper. Those are good. Yeah, those are Gorman good. Thomas. I know the names, though. I know <laughs> the names. <laughs> what major leaguer left an impression on you? So – one of my dad's uh, – probably my dad's favorite players, Martin Maldonado for the Houston Astros. Um, he won the gold glove a few years ago, and he gave – I guess you get three gold gloves. Oh, wow. And he, get, he gave one of them to my dad. Oh, so wow. my, my dad's – my dad has that in his office. And, you know, my dad would never say this, but he's he really is one of the best. He's the best catching instructor in the world. That's what he does. That's his passion. Um, so I think Martin Maldonado is probably my – he's probably my favorite baseball player of all time. Um, you know, I, I wore – he gave me – he gave me gear. I had Maldi on my neck when when I was catching. Um, so he's my favorite player, and you know he's he, he'll be he'll be a family friend for life. Going back to what you said, you see those dudes in the clubhouse, right? So you learn, okay, you learn how to act, and you learn how not to act yep. because these are uh, these are professionals. Mm-hmm. And I've been in those clubhouses, and I've seen that you just have different personalities. Like some dudes are completely great dudes and they're cool and they're chill and they're great and they're supportive. And then you got other guys that are just absolute D bags. And I think you probably saw both of that. Yeah. Right. And you kind of learn and go, I'm not doing that. Don't want to be that guy. Yeah. That, that's kind of what my, my dad, you know, I can talk, talk all day about, about my parents, but my dad, he always told me that, you know, sometimes you learn more about what to do, what not to do than what to do. And, you know, he, every, every time that a situation would come up or, you know, so, someone would mess something up, he, he'd be like, Garrett, like that's if exactly. you want to know what not to do, do that, do this instead. So I think I think it was a phenomenal experience, and you know, definitely, definitely one that not many kids get get. Was that on Instagram this past? Uh, was it the winter or the fall? Your mom throwing the ball. That uh, that was uh, Mother's Day. Mother's that was Mother's Day. Good uh, arm. Oh, she's I mean, she brings it. She's the athlete. <laughs> I mean, um, right? Yeah, she's she's super athletic. Um, she's more athletic than than she gives herself credit for. Yeah. So, um, what did she play? Anything? High school, college? What did she? She played. She played soccer all throughout high school. Okay. Um, but you could tell she's bouncy. Yeah. She Quick is, twitch. I, she, she says that's where I get my twitch from. <laughs> See, it, it, is, <laughs> is is from her. But you know, my my dad he, he traveled so much. Yeah. Um, that uh, he he was got, gone out of the house. So I remember like I was being six years old. You know, throwing football as hard as I could to my mom and. <laughs> and she could make the play. She bring the catch. Oh, she made the is that play. Is all you got? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so you know, I I can remember that. That's one of my most vivid memories in, in, of my childhood is in the backyard throwing up the hill That's awesome. to my mom with the. It, I think it was a black XFL football <laughs> from like first from like iteration of the XFL, yeah, of course, yeah, first, first iteration. iteration. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The uh, the offense will be coordinated by Chad Scott this season. Obviously, Neil will have a hand in that as well. What was your take away from spring ball when they put the stuff in as far as what this is going to maybe look differently than it was a year ago yeah I think talking with uh, coach Scott a lot is uh kind of his um whole mo as the coordinator is you know to, to put our guys in the best positions to make plays so you know guys like Cole Taylor Devin Carter CJ guys like that put them in great situations to where they don't have to think too much. We just get the ball to them, and they can go make plays. Mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what, what he wants to do is just find creative ways to to get the balls to our playmakers. Yeah. More designed runs for you, or are you just going to take off when you feel like it? 
Uh, I'm just gonna run the offense uh, to the best of my ability. Um, you know, wh- whether he's, that's he's got it. He's giving <laughs> Kurtz all over he's here trying to uncover secrets. I mean, he's, he's just he's got stonewall and Kurtz. I cannot will. shake him loose. No, man. You yeah, you know whether whether I got to hand the ball off to CJ 20, 30 times a game or I got to throw it 40 times a game. You know, whatever it takes to win. You know, I want to do. Yeah. Or run it for two oh five. You'll do that too. Whatever it takes. You're getting nothing out of this. I get nothing. I mean, you're trying. You, you, because Hoppy, you're handling like a deposition. I mean, you just. Gonna, you, I am watching Suits right now, so I'm <laughs> I'm well versed in my lawyer talk. So <laughs> <laughs> you handled it. You handled it very well. Yeah, very. Yeah, very exactly. Real quick though, you mentioned a couple of the new pieces, wide receiver wise, with Taylor yeah. and Carter. Nice weapons. Those are going to be good additions to the program, huh? Yeah, I mean, Cole Taylor is. Is a freak. I mean, he's the one. He gets off the bus first. Yeah, you know, nice big target for you. He's there. a big guy, and you know, he, he's he's got great, phenomenal hands. Um, and then Devin, Devin's just a physical freak. Um, you know, and you know, we're we're not going to discount. Um, you know, EJ Horton, who's the transfer from Marshall, he can. I heard he can scoot. He, he can fly. Yeah, uh, I mean, he's he's got real real speed. Um, you know, Jeremiah Aaron, you know, who, who I'm looking forward to. To watching this year, um, and then you got Cortez Braham, Preston Fox. You know, you got a ton of guys that they you know have paid paid their dues and you know put in the work this summer. Sure. Preston Fox catches everything. He catches everything. Really? Yeah. He's uh, he's he's uh, he's got some hands. Yeah. But you know, you're the second guy that has talked to me in the last three days about EJ Horton, saying like, it was CJ Donaldson. I'm talking to him Friday, <laughs> and he said, Choo. yeah, vertical threat. Yeah, he's got real sp- like that's that's real speed. Yeah, yeah, but you can too. We had Malachi Ruffin in here doing what was what was that called? Micro internship? Is that what that was? Yes, it was. He says you're right there, one of the top five fastest guys on the team. True. Well, right, thanks to his mom. Yeah, th- thanks to my mom. That's what he said. Yeah, it, when I need to, I can I can you get can it go. Up. Yeah, yeah I, I can it. get going. What's, your, what, what's the fastest you ever clocked out GPS? Uh, uh, don't hold back. Let's go. <laughs> maybe like. Did you get twenty one? Oh yeah, Tw- twenty one. It shook off twenty one. <laughs> shook you off. Way <laughs> low. Over. He just I, gave I, you an over and didn't even bat it. I think I hit twenty two in a scrimmage uh, in twenty twenty one. I think. Uh, What's the matter? Getting old? Can't you get that again? What's the matter? Old? Oh, um, old man? It's, it's the weight. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I, I hit twenty ones this summer, so you know. Hopefully, hopefully with some adrenaline, I'll be able to to get twenty two. He's put on tw- guys put on twenty pounds. I mean, give him a break. Yeah. What's pounds. the biggest thing food wise that changed to help you put twenty? We have a lot of listeners that want to take twenty off, but for those the <laughs> including few, the guy sitting to his <laughs> right, <laughs> but for the few people that want to, what was the biggest food diet change you made to gain that weight? You know, it kind of kind of sounds gross, but you know, my, my dad being in athletics and he when he was playing, he played he played in the big leagues at like one sixty five at six oh three. God. Yeah, so he he was he, he was small. Like at the end of the season, he'd be like one sixty. He'd start at like one eighty five, and then throughout the year, he'd lose it. So he said he um, it was like two scoops of mashed potatoes, chocolate milk, and two hard boiled eggs at the same time. No, I mean, <laughs> like that's your meal before you go to bed. Um, so yeah, I, I've, wow. I, I've done that. I did that all all winter and all summer. That's cool. Yeah, I mean it's it doesn't taste great going down, but you know because you're mixing yeah, you're mixing like eggs that's right, with chocolate milk. Like that's, all, that's, that's, three, that's three of my favorite foods right there. I'm like, try, I'll be I'll be three hundred before we no, get to the first. It's it's the or, it's the order of dissension. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's how it goes down. Yeah, how it goes down. Hey Garrett, I don't want you know. I, I, we got to get your dad on here. I want to talk to your dad. I mean, t- to be one sixty five and catch in the show. I mean, that's a grind. Yeah, That's a you know, I'm, I'm sure my my dad would 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 love to come on, but you know, he he always told me that you know this is your show. I just want to be dad. <laughs> so we you, you you ask him that on a one off. <laughs> go can, back, go back to the nutrition side of things because that that really is where it's changed. I know you followed your dad's yeah regimen there, but it's just so different than it was 15, 20 years ago. How much easier does that make it for you? Food's available all the time. Mm-hmm. Advice is available all the time. Protein shakes available all the yeah. time. That I would think that just eliminates the thinking part of that, which has got to be a huge help. Yeah, you know, I think with the help of Haley um, and her staff, uh, along with Mike Joseph, I think we have the best best staff for putting weight on. Like I came in at like one seventy something, and you know now I'm up to two hundred two, right around two hundred. Um, so I think they they've done a phenomenal job putting me on a plan and ensuring that I follow that plan. Yeah, the nutrition's changed unbelievably, dude. When you go over, when you're in the locker room. The uh, the uh, beverage center is that what y'all call it the the snack area yeah like refuel it, it's it's refuel the fueling yeah. station the fueling station again I bring this up fifty two times a week but the fact that we've gone from you can't give them cream cheese on a bagel or it was a violation to what it is now it's just like 
it is awesome. Yeah. Absolutely awesome. Just a whole different The mindset. access is incredible now. Yes. Which is where it should be. Yeah, absolutely. I remember, real quick, I'll tell this story, and, and it wasn't all that long ago. Within the last two decades when I was working in the department, I was sitting with one of the school's all-time great players. We'll go unnamed right now. One of the school's all-time great players. Had just finished playing, had not yet been drafted in the league. We were sitting there just before lunchtime, late morning. I said, all right, what do you got? What's the plan? He said, well, I got just finished one workout. I've got another one coming later, but I'm going to head down. I'm going to get something to eat. Went to a sub shop, said, I'm buy, I am I got to buy a 12-inch sub today. I'm going to have six of it for lunch. I'm going to save the other six for dinner. This was a guy that was three weeks from being drafted and wow. playing here within the last two decades. That's where that has mm-hmm. changed, and that fueling and refueling has come miles and miles. Yeah. Well, it, it should. It should it have. It should. Yeah, well, it should have been done oh, a long time well, that's, ago. Yeah, well, yes. soon, yeah. Don't get me going. <laughs> that's that horse crap NCAA with their rules. That is what ultimately has screwed them now because they tried to play absolute iron-fisted, not facing any reality whatsoever. Let's hammer these kids on things like you can't give them cream cheese, right? You talk about majoring in the minors. That's what they were concerned about. And then they went to the Supreme Court and got their ass absolutely whipped, and now everything is just crazy because of that, because of that mentality. That's the mentality. Anyway, I digress. (laughs) As I said earlier, along to further action. Yeah, further yeah. action in the third quarter. Uh, <laughs> as I said, Garrett, first ever NIL guest sponsored here on Three Guys Before the Game, presented by Daniel's Men's Store. His appearance not only is giving him some clothes, but also fifty million dollars for this appearance. <laughs> no, that's not confirmed. You do so, not have that confirmed. Hey, what? Uh, I was getting to a question. Oh, oh, sorry. Go that's ahead. all right. <laughs> Just since he's not answering, it it, since he's but, not answering any of yours, I might as well ask go ahead, him one because. <laughs> um. Give me your take on NIL, because you're—I mean—you're in that first group. You came in, there wasn't. Yeah. You're leaving, there is. Give it to me. What, do you, what are your thoughts on it? I think it's a—it's a great thing uh, when used correctly. Um, you know, I, I don't think that there should be any tampering or, you know, anything along those lines. But I think it's—it's it's a great, great opportunity for guys to be able to, you know, especially guys with with families and people they have to support back home. You know, to to make extra money to help support them. I think it's a great thing because. Mm-hmm. You know, co- college athletes, you know, and a lot of the college towns are, are, are the, f- the face of the town. So I think it's great that they're able to capitalize that and, you know, help help their families out. Yeah. I I, I think. Uh-oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> he already knows. He's already got it. <laughs> Would you agree with that sentiment? So start with that. Whatever you're about to say, <laughs> as you agree with that sentiment. Which sentiment? What he just said about NIL. You think it's good. You're pro player getting paid. Yeah, get paid. Yeah. Yeah, get paid. I got some issues overall, but yes, fun. Well, we talked about this many, many times. The, they, the college has screwed it up by straining a gnat and swallowing a camel years ago, and not letting, not sharing the revenue. Mm-hmm. By not sharing the revenue for generations, that was the big screw up. Putting all the money into coaches, into facilities, and having essentially free labor—that was a huge mistake. Now you're finally getting compensated. But okay, so in a game where you are playing. Uh, assuming whether you start or come in relief, and there's something have you get, there's a late hit on you, there's a little scrape, you get up, you get a little feisty. Who is the first player on the offense to come to your side? Who's gonna first? Who's gonna help you out in the scrape? Who's the first one? Uh, probably, probably the big boys up front. Um, okay, they'll be right there. Yeah, I mean, I think Kansas State. It happened last year, um, and. You know, the, the O-line, O-line wasn't too happy with that. So, I think Jaquay Hubbard handled business, I think, on that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I'd probably say any one of the, the five big boys up front. We'll be uh, there quick. Yeah, I think so. Okay, good. Because good they, they, they know me. They know me that, you know, um, I'm not the biggest guy, but especially when, it's, when it becomes the D-lineman. So, I think that they'll, they'll handle it. Will you chip? Will you chip back? I, I was mean, just going to say, you like to talk out there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, I love it, but. You know, I've I've had to learn that. You know, I was much worse uh, in high school, yeah. but I've had to learn that. You know, the quarterback, because <laughs> that play clock goes. Yeah. So I, after one play, you got to look to the sideline for the next play because it, can't it's be not, screwing around. Yeah, it's not stopping for anybody. Yeah. yeah. What's your normal when you start trash talking? My guess would be this: normal trash talk starts. Let's say you run the ball, you run out of bounds, and you get a good, you get a significant play. Is your first piece of trash talk normally to the defensive back as you give the ball to the official and start heading back, going to be here all day, 
it's going to be a long day. You starting with that one? Is that normally a, an entree to it? It's probably something like that, just maybe a little more not not family friendly. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I really don't know know what I say. It, it just, just just comes just out. comes out. It, it just kind of happens. Got to get. He's got to get back. Like he says, got to get back. He's yeah, because that it, it's not like high school where they got to wait for the ball to be set. No, I get it. You know, they, that forty it. clock's rolling. Um, what is you, that, on that? When is, so what is what is that like when you know there's a big play you just ran, you're gassed, and now you're 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 waiting for the play, right? You ever have an issue like get the play in, man? Well, if, if I bust a big run, um, I, I'm just worried about getting my breath back. A lot of times I'm like, all right, we can we, we can wait for the play to get in. I can get it in with 20 seconds left. Just let me get my breath back. Okay. But I mean, some sometimes I, I want to play faster than than you know the, the the game plan calls for. But you know that's why I'm the player and they're the coach. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, what's your most what, what's your favorite memory on the field so far in your career? Um, I think it's I think it'll be tough to beat um the Oklahoma game last year. Mm-hmm. I think that. You know, it was just a culmination of, of a lot of things, a lot of work, you know, a t- ton of people believing in me uh, from back home, from up here. Um, a lot of people believing in me and trusting in me. Um, so I think, you know, I remember sitting after uh, watching that game or sitting after on the field with with my dad, my brother and my mom, you know, and just just really being thankful and blessed that, you know, I chose to come up here because mm-hmm. the school the school means the world to me. Yeah. You got a little scoot to you there, man. Boop, boop, there was boom, that. I'm just looking back. You had uh, you had that that touchdown in the fourth quarter, mm-hmm. 11 yard touchdown run. Oh, wrong way. That's all right. Wrong way. Make something happen. <laughs> Doesn't matter. That's <laughs> his. Ver- Make that, something happen. That's his version of the major Harris's <laughs> yeah, well, wrong way, yeah. right way, yeah. wrong way, whatever. Is this it? Is this yeah. it? Make plays. That's a hell of a throw. No, he just ran it in a minute ago. Oh. Yeah, that was a hell of a throw, right? You there. mean the fade worked? Yeah, it did. Was that fade or back shoulder though? Back that's more back shoulder. Yeah. Boom. Look, get get some pile Put your head down. Put get your head out. down. Run through somebody. That's it. That's it. So no it matter what game. happens, you will always be the guy that led West Virginia to its first ever Big 12 victory over Oklahoma. Yeah, we, the the defense really picked me up, um, you know, keeping them within – keeping them, I think it was 23-20. So yeah. keep, keep it yes. off, yeah. keep, 20. keeping an offense like that under 20 points, you know, de- defense played played phenomenal. Um, you know, I, I, think, I don't think our tight ends got enough credit for that game. Uh, Traylon Davis and Brian Palindi, I think they they played their butts off. Um, you know, we, we ran a lot of counter that game, and you know they were they were they were getting in the hole every time. And then obviously our O line and you know wide receivers Bryce, they 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 played their hearts out. Mm-hmm. Speaking of defense, that's one of the questions heading into this season is how much better the defense will be this season, back end specifically that you went against mm-hmm. all spring. A bunch of different guys back there now yeah. should be some talent. That should that group should take a step forward this year, shouldn't it? Yeah, I, I think they will take a step forward, and you know it, it all it all falls on to or they all follow Aubrey Burks. Um, I think he's one he's one of the best players I've ever played against, um, and he, he's, he he has a real knack for the game. Um, you know he he feels things that you shouldn't feel as a defense or as a defender. Um, so I think if if he, if he when he gets the guys going in the, in the right direction, I have confidence in him. Give me a couple newbies that people might not be aware of right now. That during workouts this summer, throwing it around a little bit, that you're going like, "Ooh, that, that's a cat." Um, let's think on offense or defense. Either or. People um, I, people don't know about yet. I mean, people know about Rodney, but um, I mean, what he, do you think there? He, he he's done a great job this this summer. Um, I, he graduated later. His high school graduated later, so he missed the first first couple of weeks of summer. But you know he's done a phenomenal job uh, picking up the playbook. You know in all of our player practices, he, he's made some plays. Um, but the guy probably is a uh, Noah Massey from uh, mm. Texas, I believe. He's a he's a he's a big guy, but he he can run. He's got great hands. Um, he, he's he's probably a guy that I don't think many people know of. But he's he, he's going to be a guy. Okay, there's a name. Put yeah. that one. How there. about okay? Flip back to defense for a second. You're lining up. You were looking across at the at the first string defense. Who was a guy you made sure you knew where they were? Um, other than Aubrey Burks, um, I'll I'll go three levels. I'll go secondary very linebacker. Yep, very good. D line, probably Aubrey Burks in the sec. Aubrey or Marcus Floyd in the secondary. Okay. They're, they're both players. They both they both see the game in, in a special way, um, and then. Lee Koba at, at Mike linebacker, um, he's he's probably you know he, he gets off the bus first again. He, mm-hmm. he, yeah. he looks the part, um, and then Sean Martin. Sean yeah. Martin looks you know he's 
he, he runs with the with the mids. So he runs with the tight ends and linebackers and stuff, and he plays defensive line. So he's a super athletic guy. So, you know, every time I make sure I know where those, him. those three guys, sure. guys are. Obviously, we know Sean Well from Bluefield. Great sure. size. Yeah, awesome high school career here. So a year ago, West Virginia opens at Pitt. The electricity of that game was tremendous. Mm -hmm. And this year it's going to be Penn State, 100,000 plus. So how much do you think about that? Do you start visualization now for that game? How do you, how do you gear up toward that? I think that one of the ways to gear up for, for a big time environment like that, because that, that, that's one of the premier premier environments and a night game, 730 kickoff in Happy Valley. I think just just work work every day because that, you know, you, the, the game will be there. So I think whenever you get caught up, caught up in looking, looking too far ahead, that's where the anxiety and, you know, all that stuff comes in. But I think if you just take it day by day, prepare for that game and not get caught up in the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you, you know, you just got to go play ball. I think the last frontier that hasn't properly been handled yet in college sports, we're, we're at nutrition and sleep now, we're starting to get that mm -hmm. and respect that properly, is sports performance and mental preparation and mental training. Uh, where are you on that spectrum? Do you do much of that? Yeah, we have a we have a phenomenal uh, sports psychologist, Dr. Sophia. Um, I, I work with her every 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 week. Um, along along with a lot of other guys, she's phenomenal at what she does. She played she played tennis in college, so she's she kind of gets being an athlete. And you know, tennis is different than than football. Tennis and golf, where you're the only person out there, you can't blame. Mm -hmm. Oh, he missed a block. You know, this, that, and the other. It, it's all on you. So I think she brings a unique perspective to to the mind game side of things. What kind of things has she given you as far as coping, or do you do visualization? Like, how do you mm -hmm. get yourself ready to go? Yeah, I think she. So our our biggest thing um, with with this this summer was just not not making things more than they are. Um, you know, just you know, this is a game that I love. Um, but yeah, I said it, it's it's a game. You know, it's not life or death. And I think that's when I'm playing the best is when I'm playing free, uh, playing within the rules of the play, but playing free and you know just going out and playing ball. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you get that paralysis by analysis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Did she have to? Did she have to get you to change any way that you thought about the game? And like, instead, well, instead of thinking about it this way, think about it this way. Kind of uh, more so just like, just how to differentiate, you know, playing and then thinking. She she calls it, there, there's a play box and then there's a think box. Coach Soraka, who was the offensive analyst uh, in 2021, I brought, she, he brought that idea to me and I brought it to Sophia and Sophia really liked it. Um, where the think box is everything you do pre-snap. So what are these safeties doing? What, what, what's what's going on here? And then the play box, you should have no thoughts. You're just going to play in ball. Wow. Yeah. You get to that point, though, then it's then you see things. Pretty the, the, it's just yeah. reaction. Yeah, it's just reaction. Yeah. yeah, so that's been the biggest thing that, that me and her have been working on this summer is just continuing to be consistent where you have those two, two, pit, that's two spots. That's good. When, what's your biggest – let's do two things here – individually what is your absolute that you want to accomplish in the next month here when camp starts okay i personally want to get better at this 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 and team wise where do you mm -hmm. think you guys need to really fine tune coming out of spring as you get ready to go yeah i think personally i just want to want to continue to get get more comfortable you know throwing the ball every every single down you know obviously the game plan is not going to call for that every week but, you know, be comfortable to where if, if they need me to throw the ball 40 times a game, there's no problem with that. Um, and then I think team-wise, I think we just want to be uh, an efficient and explosive offense. So I think just, you know, getting getting explosive plays. But then also part of my job is to get our athlete, our best athletes with the ball in their hands in space. So I think that's kind of a both team goal and uh, individual goal for me is – to get our athletes the the ball in space and just watch, watch them run, watch, watch them go do their thing because right. that's why they're here. That's why they're special. Yeah, we always laugh this time of year because every single I mean for fifty you no know, for one hundred and fifty years, every time camp starts, these are the two biggest themes everyone says. We had the we had the hardest off season conditioning that mm -hmm. we've ever had, and our team chemistry is the best ever closest we've ever been <laughs> Close, closest, closest we've ever been every single year every single year now these guys could go down the absolute crapper once october comes but like hey it was the greatest chemistry okay fine mm -hmm. 
with that being all right, that's that's fine. True. Do you feel? Are you feeling this team? Yeah. I you, mean, I've I, I've I've all co- all the confidence in the world, and you know, every guy in that locker room. Um, you know, you, you said it, but it, it's I've been here. This would be my fourth season here. Here it I, comes. Here it comes. Ready? Go ahead. Go ahead. Say it. Say it. Just to make sure. Say it. <laughs> Get it on record. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. And this has go been ahead. this has been one of the toughest offseasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, you but you do believe that. Yeah, I, I feel good about everything. Jokes aside, um, and you know, I'm just ready to just go put the ball in the end zone. Yeah. It, but one of those things, this we haven't we've gone a long time here without talking about it collectively. We've talked individually. This offensive line has a chance to be really yeah. elite, right? You've got mm-hmm. some individual pieces back that are excellent. Thomas Remack. Mixing in last year was yep. a great piece coming in for the injured committer. So this line, you've got to have a ton of confidence as the quarterback coming in behind this group. Yeah, I've, I've, I have all the confidence in the world in, in those guys. You know, I lived with Doug and Frazier um, last semester. Uh, Doug moved out because he got married. Um, but, you know, I'm cl- close with all the guys. I know they have, I know they have my back. Um, and, you know, I, I have all the confidence in the world that, you know, whatever we ask them to do, uh, whether it's pass set every every single down or run block every single down, I have all the confidence in the world in them. Yeah. Well, you hit this earlier when you said this that West Virginians, you know, that kind of the the base foundation philosophy is tell me what I can't do and I'm going to show you what I can do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the right mindset for this year. Like yeah. Neil said at media day, like, well, you can pick us last. That's fine. We're not going to finish last. Yeah. Right. We're exactly. going to be. We, you don't know what's going on inside the walls of our locker room. So I think from that standpoint, you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the years that West Virginia has always been, oh, it's going to be up here, and you get this. But when, these are the fun seasons yeah. where you show that you're not what you thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. So dress-wise here from fine-looking Phil's, if you're given the opportunity, you said your premier footwear would be snake boots? Yeah, I mean, if, if I had to pick – if I had to pick what, when I really wanted to put something on, boots. Yeah, I'd probably. Well, mom's boots. not crazy about them. Well, she she just like she likes her boy in you know loafers and dress shoes and some nice know. Johnson and Murphys over there. Phil got a big selection of the Johnson and Murphys. Exactly. shoes. You can Cole, find one you Cole like. Han Cole Han, too. I love Cole, 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 Cole Han's Han guy. over there too. Yeah, of course, yeah, he's got Cole Han and Cole Taylor. Of he's <laughs> got, how about the, Brad? How about the fit on the jacket? Because he's not a big guy, but he's got broad shoulders. So how are you gonna? Well, he's what, gonna be a great fit. That's that's why. Phil is the best. He'll yeah. tailor the He'll jacket ta- right to my bring shoulders. It right in, right? He'll bring yep. it right in there. Nice little form fitting. Now, do you go the shorter pant? He does. He's shorter short, pants, big. Yeah. The, the pant young guy. guys that are in shape, that's in yeah. style. A little shorter pants, not the shorts. Made, no socks. If you see the shorts, I got the five and a half inch right, inseam yeah, shorts I'm on today. You, you yeah. can go with that. A so guys. <laughs> but pants, yeah. no sock, go with the loafer. Yeah, my, my dad hates it, but you know, I'm I'm a tighter ish pants. I don't like the tight pants, skin tight, but tighter. And then you know, cut right above the ankles. Yeah, got it. You know. What about those dudes when you were in Greece? You see, what, did you? They have the capri pants over there. Did you see those yeah, guys? The, where you where you the, stand the on tweeners? Yeah, that's what, what I call them. I call them tweeners. That's, that's a good call. What, you, what's your what's what's the, what are your thoughts on that? Would yeah, you do I, it? No, I wouldn't go I, that. I route. wouldn't. Yeah, you know, oh, wearing I, capri. At the beach, I'm a big, yeah. I'm a big, you know, khaki pants and flip flops guy. Right. And that's about the closest I'll get to. Capris. Yeah, but see, you're a beach guy, though. The capris do serve a purpose there. You're walking on the beach there, take the flip flops off. Your pants on the bottom aren't going to get the, the water up on you. You oh, walk through point. there. Or you just wear shorts. Or you shorts. Can, but it might be a little cooler than when you get off the beach. <laughs> you're having a drink or two there at the bar. You got to have a little pant on now. Yeah, if it's, if it's, <laughs> that, cool, if it's that cold, you go bathing suit bottoms Thank you. and then a hoodie. And a wetsuit. <laughs> and a wetsuit as well. Well, you went long on top, short on top. You could reverse that. Yeah. Long on the bottom, short sleeve shirt. But I solved your problem. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> yeah. Might you pick that up? All right, you get you get three you get three things to eat forever. No, <laughs> just your favorite three meals. Um, probably you know I'm gonna go basic here. Cheeseburger. Really, I love a good burger. Interesting. Um, and then probably uh, black and grouper is is oh, my next. Oh, some fish. Yeah. Seafood. Florida. 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 Gotta have some seafood. Um, Florida. and then. I don't know, I love shrimp. Shrimp's always been... I just uh, made some last night. Yeah, shrimp's always been, since I was a kid, um, I actually stopped eating shrimp 
<clears throat> for a while. What's that? What reason? Real religious reasons? Why? No, because I found out that that's why flamingos get pink is because they eat too. They eat some <laughs> shrimp. So I thought I was gonna turn pink. Excuse me. <laughs> that that might be an excuse me. Check on that. Yeah, I was like six, and, <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped stopped eating shrimp for for like two three years. Who told like, you that? Your brother. Yeah, I think so. Uh, figures, yeah. Yeah. I think we were down in Orlando, and he told me that at the hotel, and I never crushed ate. you. Yeah, I didn't eat shrimp for like three years after I that. Ate. My brother, when I was younger, my brother, <laughs> my brother told me that I I I wasn't born in our family. That our, <laughs> our parents were taking a drive on a Sunday, and they found me in a mud puddle. <laughs> Jeez. Hey, fact I check. I bought into that. You bought it? Yeah, I was little. How long? As How long did you buy it? Yeah, until like last week. <laughs> <laughs> As flamingos dine on algae and brine shrimp, its body metabolizes the pigments, turning right. its feathers pink. Yeah. Your brother That's was right. helping. He was right. He was on it. When he was on it. He was right. one big difference. Yeah, he doesn't have feathers. Yeah, I don't have feathers. <laughs> That we know of. Which the six year old <laughs> the six year old me did not realize that. Yeah, exactly. So no I, no dessert there in the mix? What's your dessert situation? Not a dessert guy? You know, my, my mom the, the name probably isn't the best, but it's called Death by Chocolate. Oh yeah. She does it every single every single uh Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um I haven't had thank she brought it up last year for uh Thanksgiving, but that's probably my, my guess. What's in it? Uh it's it's got Cool Whip, chocolate pudding, brownies, Ooh, uh, yeah. Heath Bar mix. Oh, yeah. oh my! And Underrated. She, she Heath stacks bar. it up. She yeah. stacks it up yeah. on top. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, layers it up, and it's yeah. it's phenomenal. I think yeah. they sell it at Go Mart. I'm sure not mistake if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, I'm looking at a picture. Of Your mom comes up to yeah. how many? Like how does she do games? How does she? So my mom, my mom loves loves being in control. So she doesn't she doesn't not the biggest fan of flying. So oh. she she lives she lives up in Georgia now. So she she drives up. Drives up through Charlotte and boom, just comes on up. Comes on up. So she she went to she went to every single home game last year, and awesome. then she saw my 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 last start uh, at at Oklahoma State, which was which was special. Um, so yeah, so and then my dad, my dad comes every game. He, he doesn't really have, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, it kind of times up perfect to where season. my season's his off exactly. season. So he's able to come come to all the games. All right, awesome. so you had a tough day. You need to talk to somebody. Your first calls to your mom or your dad. What do I, do I want? Do I want to be heard, or do I want the problem to be solved? What a great response! That's a great response. That's a great response. You want to be heard? I uh, I I think I'm definitely going to my mom. Okay. You know, my my mom. She she's one of my best friends. Um, you know, I could talk to her about anything, and I already know what the what the response is from my dad would be. Yeah, he's gonna he's suck gonna it up. Fix it. He's gonna well, try to fix I mean, it. if I just texted him like, "Hey, Dad," like, da 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 da, da it would just be okay. <laughs> 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 um, and then you know, I we, I'd call him later and we'd figure it out. Um, but you know, I, I love both my parents. Um, and I, I both see them as you know two of my best friends. Uh, though I can awesome. go with, go with them to, with anything. Oh, that's awesome. That was really good. That, that, that was a. Do I want to be heard or do I want the problem solved? Because you're like your dad. That's what he does. Like it goes. Yeah. Through, that's his every day. Like, What's that turn, guy? like yeah. just turn that pitch right around on you. Guys, <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, tried, he's, he's tried to come in on the hand. He's, he's gotten f- the best of me today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my dad. My dad's no no real fluff. He just wants. All right, what do you like? What do you need? He doesn't really want want the sob story. But my mom should listen. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Hey, I got a Tallahassee, Florida State, West Virginia connection thing. Bobby Bowden. Marucci Bats. Yeah. You know that story? Uh, I don't know the story, but actually. So he's from, he was here. Athletic trainer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because at the Manning Camp, actually, um, they, they had us in a, a dorm of four guys. So it was me, me, Quinn Ewers, quarterback from Texas, Garrett Nussmeyer, the LSU guy, and then Michael Pratt, the Tulane guy. So we were all four. So I, I, I got close with Garrett and uh, two Garrett's funny. But. Um, the that guy, the Marucci back guy, he he came in and introduced some stuff to uh yeah. to to me, and, and I talked to talked to them for a little while. So he told you WV, is yeah, the yeah he, he gave me the connection. No, no, uh, let the, oh, wait, let's coach his time out here. So that was a hell of a four four person uh, <laughs> yeah. get together. So yours, uh, the Texas quarterback, mm-hmm. uh, significant cutting of his hair. In yeah. the off season, it looks now, great. Looks great. Looks great. So when you if, and you're watching him, you guys are doing drills. What, what, what's what's his deal? Now you got a chance. Yeah, he's say. he's a phenomenal phenomenal player. You know, he can really throw the football. But you know, the, my biggest takeaway from that is just he, he's a really genuine dude. 
Um, he, he is who he is, um, and he's not changed that for anybody. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's a great dude, and we had a blast, you know, working with each other um, and pushing each other and then also kind of kind of getting to know each other. Yeah, you don't have to play him. And he's yeah. interesting at the Manning cap because he's being pushed by a Manning coming behind him, Arch, right? Arch yeah, Manning. Arch now Manning is going to be there. For years, yeah, yeah, he was there. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, dude. Well, this was good. Have you enjoyed this? Oh, it's been a blast. Have you done other podcasts? None that have been this fun. Oh, see, oh, he just ate plus. Despite just, just coming in here, just des, plus. Des, despite the the deposition questions that Kirchhoff tried to hit you. Yeah, with. but th- th- thankfully I'm in tune tune with my lawyer my lawyer <laughs> stuff. Um, <laughs> no issue. Been it watching was, a lot of suits. So very strong. Very yeah, strong there, lawyer there's a chance. Response. There's a chance. I'm not. I mean, a possibility. I'm not going to say it. But like when you get back and you see Neil here, like tomorrow or something, Neil's going to say, "Hey, you did the podcast," and you go like, "Yeah," and he said, "It, it won't be too far." Like. Hoppy tried to get you. <laughs> <laughs> One be a surprise. I think within the first three questions, you take the under. Yeah, I take the under on. That'd be three, probably three under. Yeah. All I did Try was to... ask the question that Mountaineer Nation wants to know. I'm sorry, I was doing my job. I'm sorry. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think you can answer. You can. Well, I mean, some of it's a given. What? I mean, what? I mean, yeah. The answer it was a rhetorical question. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't rhetorical at all. It was not <laughs> a rhetorical question. It was a question legitimate question which he handled with a palm i mean he he could have you know he's he's skill, obviously he's been asked that maybe a time or two before yeah and he's answered i'm speaking as though he's not here uh, yeah he's just sitting right well here. he's got to he's got let's keep talking like he's not here he's got two of the all-time great media handlers and michael Fregal and mike montoro right mike and mike that's that's actually who i did my internship with this summer or not with not with them directly, but yeah, in, in the, the, in the communications there. department. Yeah. yeah, I mean those yeah, two a sport guys. management major. Yeah, those yeah, two guys are you. those two guys are top shelf. Yeah, they are. Yeah, They're top, great. Top They're great shelf to work guys. for. Yeah. Right. Now probably when they get back with them, it'll probably be those two guys will go like, "What about Hoppy? What Hoppy? <laughs> Hoppy? Hoppy try to pin you up against the wall? What Hoppy try to do?" So, yeah, he, he he tried, but you know. No, you took it. He, yeah. he handled. He handled it. He read. He read. He, he read. He read the. He read the blitz coming from the side. <laughs> he, it was a hot read. Had a hot read. He got a hot read. Hands, right. 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 Yeah. <laughs> slid the protect. He came up to line. Slid uh-huh. the protection. Right. <laughs> Had no we're issue. Yeah, we're yeah, all good. good. We're all good. All good. All right. Yeah. So we've reached that time in the show where we say bye to you. I know you wanted to stay. Yeah. For textual healing. For textual healing. I mean, that's um, a phenomenal segment. But we don't, uh, <laughs> <laughs> with all due respect. But uh, we certainly, we we certainly don't want to make you late. But, folks, an historic edition here, episode four seventy five, the first ever NIL sponsored version of Three Guys Before the Game, presented by Fine Look and Phil at Daniel's Men's Store of Morgantown, the premier clothier, the premier haberdasher of the state of West Virginia, get the greatest WVU gear, and then the fine, fine-looking stuff, all the Daniels Men's Store. I will say this before we say goodbye to Garrett. Over the next five, six weeks as we go through August and the season begins, it's worth checking out weekly, Kerchival, new stuff being oh, really? distributed okay. out there and coming as we get closer to the Excellent. season opener. So, Let me turn my mic on. One last thing, Garrett. I don't know if you know this or not, but Hoppy over there, he has his own craft beer. Does he? Yes. Yeah. It's he a is. very it's a crisp clean ale. <laughs> <laughs> it's is very it? good. Yeah. We got it here? Well, it's in town. They just took they just made the latest batch. I may be able to effort and maybe get I need, one. I need to go buy you're, one. You're twenty one plus years of 21, age. Twenty one, turn twenty two in October. Yeah, you, you can hook him up. Bingo. Yeah, he's, well, he's there. Yeah. That'd be a good way, right? Be a good way to maybe post on a Saturday maybe night. after the season. After the game. Yeah. Maybe after, after the game. A sa- Saturday. you got to get carbs back into them after yeah. a Saturday night, although it is a very we'll regroup in February. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Textual healing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're dapping up. We're saying so long to our guy, Garrett Green, presented to us by Daniel's Men's Store of Morgantown. <laughs> Finally, uh, finally solved how we get the guest just transition. That's very Put smooth. Smooth up there, and we get that thing out you there. You know, maybe I'm often a prisoner of the moment. I mean, what a what a intelligent, 
Um, yeah. What a guy who just who, who is comfortable in his shoes, you know, comfortable in his answers, not intimidated by questions, handles what he can handle. Definitely, definitely handles the inevitable question. Got it together. It man. will be easy for fans to root for. It has been easy to root for, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, great point. Great point. He defines what this whole process is that we go through with this college athlete stuff. In other words, you, you're supposed to come here as a young man, Young boy, mm-hmm. young mm-hmm. Uh, an old uh, an old boy, <laughs> a young man, and then you mature, and that's what he has. You learn, and you learn, and mm-hmm. that's what he has successfully done. Three guys before the game is brought to us by Comax Business Systems. Comax is more is so much more than just a local copier guy. They handle all of your business data, IT security, even your phone system. They become your partner and allow you to focus on your business to stop worrying about your data and your documents. They've got you covered. Visit them. At comaxwv.com. That's comaxwv.com. Digital phone services as well. One line to a thousand lines. They can do that for you. Competitively priced. Call them. Free price quote. Comax. Three guys also brought to us by, as I said earlier on, Lou Wendell Marine Sales. I mean, this is peak, peak pontooning and boating season. Family owned for four decades. Recognized as the experts in the state of West Virginia when it comes to pontoon boating. The biggest dealer in the state. Check out their selection of Avalon pontoon boats made right here, 100% in the United States of America. Founded in 1973 was Avalon, and uh, they've been in that business and same kind of a deal. You do something that long, you make a quality product. Lou Wendell Marine Sales, St. Albans, selling family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com. The the term I was looking for was self-possessed. Self-possessed, calm, confident. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Really happy for him. Thanks well, he, to uh, just is he going to be the starter? <clears throat> we'll see. That's why we have camp. We have camp. That's why we have camp, right? Does he not understand how camp works? I don't know. He gets to ask the question. I know, but doesn't he understand? Thank you, Brad. Every thank job's you. open. Well, you especially ask it now. That, yes, I think he'll be the starter. Okay, thank you. Oh, wait a second. Oh, he's back. Wait, Green's he's he's back. What did Excellent. He, Excellent. What did he forget? Wait What'd a second. Forget? He's you coming back in. Wait. What'd you get? Oh, uh, sunglasses. Uh huh. I tell you, you what. Forget those. He didn't get those at the dime oh, store. Uh, 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 man. All right, man. <laughs> See, you See you later. I like that. Uh, Gary Green, return <laughs> guest. <laughs> uh, here to three guys. <laughs> Pay him some more nil. He came twice. <laughs> It was great, uh, too. He just walks right in and gets I him. like it. I know. Right? I like Open door policy here on the podcast. If you're guests, just come back in. Sure. We love it. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It'd be great. Okay, so <laughs> Textual Healing's on now, and <laughs> we're going to spend some time here talking about our first ever public outing for three guys outside of Monongalia County. <laughs> so this past weekend, we had talked to you folks about it. We were going to Greenbrier County. A two-day event. We did a Friday event for the wonderful folks of communities in schools in Greenbrier County. And then on Saturday, we just literally hung out in uh, in Rotsford, uh in front of the Sportsman's Tavern. So first off first, let's do this. The food that we had on Friday was made by Chef Paul Smith along with Emily Isaac. And Chef Paul Smith is the James Beard Award nominee. There he was off to the right when we were doing our Q&A, and he's fantastic. Uh, He's a West Virginian, graduated from Charleston Catholic, went to CIA, that's Culinary Institute of America, and as I said just most recently, uh, nominee for the James Beard Award. And Emily Isaac, uh, they collaborated on this, and Emily is the owner of a wonderful, wonderful restaurant in maybe the premier restaurant in Greenbrier County, Humble Tomato, uh, which is located in Lewisburg. So we had a ton of fun. And there's some of the food that those folks had put together. I absolutely had a crush fest yeah, on You that disappeared stuff. for a while. Yeah. Went you, over guys, and just, you ate that whole plate of sliders right there, just, I yeah, think. Well, you camped. Brad and I were visiting. You went over and held your visitation. I did. There hold, by the food. Hold right there on that picture. Back corner, left corner, those are those little s'mores. Yeah. That they made. Yeah. A little non traditional take on the s'more. Yeah. Problem was, Kirchville, they're almost so small. I think I took down a whole <laughs> row of those. <laughs> well, the food was, it was, just, it was uh, just outstanding. Yeah. Just outstanding. If you, um, Jack, if you go back to the other picture there, there yeah, there's, there's the, the s'mores. The s'mores. Yeah. 
If you go you back to the previous scenarios. picture, you may notice that when we were talking to Chef Paul, um, it wasn't really bright because the power went out. For those of you that are in the area, you knew there was a storm that went through there, knocked the power off for, well, it was every bit of 18 hours by the time it came back on. Well, it went you, off you by like five-ish. I mean, the, the game had to be stopped. There's no yeah. score on no the score scoreboard. No score on the scoreboard there. there. Yeah. So anyway, thanks to everyone there because despite the fact that we didn't have power, except for the battery generator on the PA, um, there was no air conditioning, and it could have been an easy way to me to say, no, I'm going to check out, and folks did not. So. Packed. That, that event right there packed people standing around the yep. sides. Awesome questions. They were tremendous. And, so, and stayed. Stayed. When yep. it was over, everybody kind of filtered out into the street. It was yep. a little cooler, and, and we continued to visit. It was really nice. Yeah, so special thanks to Emily Isaac, owner of the Humble Tomato, and Paul Smith. Uh, also, I want to show you a couple other pictures. This was on Saturday morning. This is the Flavor Mutt and the folks from Mountain Table. So uh, Chef Chad Jones and um, – uh, that's Mountain Table. Yep, that's the Mountain Table. That's where those are the folks that make the uh, the coffee, Three the, nice uh, coffee. the Mountaineer Morning Coffee. Rise and shine with Mountaineer Morning. Start your day with West Virginia, West Virginia Way, and they roast it there. And there's the folks from uh, Mountain Table, uh, Nadine and Alex. And right there, there is uh, the combo, the combo event, the Flavor Mutt and Mountain Table. They were selling stuff. The sourdough bread, I talked to, to Chad. Uh, man, he's got that down to like. I bought a loaf. You got some of that bread. Bought a loaf, gone. Gone? Gone. You ate it all yesterday? Karen and I ate it. Uh, Saturday in? Saturday, Sunday, gone. Okay, rank it. 11 Very out of high. a 10? Out, out of 10, I guess a 9. I mean, the 10, it's, it's tremendous. Yeah, I, I know it, it is. Same time. I was really right. impressed. So now he's cooking, he's baking that out of the sportsman's tavern. That's where his base is. He cooks there, and then that building we were in next door, if you went behind the back there. So he's getting into the restaurants. It's starting to get big distribution. It's fantastic. Also, one of the guests that we had on Saturday, Mark Bow, the Mark Bow of Barnwood Builders was there, and there's Mark, and getting ready, just finished their 18th season of Barnwood Builders and all the fantastic stuff that they have been able to accomplish, giving a great deal of publicity and recognition to the state of West Virginia. And um, that was really good chatting with him, too. It was it was great. And Mark and Barnwood Builders have had this tremendous success. I'm sure it was more than they ever could imagine for. But now they're just they're just uh, rolling and they they really stay true to West Virginia and West Virginia values and the people. They just they just they just live it. And Mark, it was great for him to be there because he was I don't know if you noticed, he was tired. <laughs> he yeah, he was, was, man. He, he was, was tired. He was just He's in Ligonier. He was just in Ligonier, PA the day before. Yeah. So we appreciate that. Did you mention oh. Brittany? Excuse me? Brittany, you get into that? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. There. Go ahead. <laughs> What's his deal? He attacks Green. Getting antsy. He, atta he attacks Garrett. Now he's like, am I He's antsy. He wants to go. I mean, you, got, you got the damn thing in front of you. It's no, right there. Doesn't. Well, you do. You're not even looking at it. Doesn't. Follows his own rules. Also, the fine folks from uh, Rolling Stove and the Greenbrier Dairy. So, yeah, those are the dudes from the Rolling Stove. And that was a nice big food truck. And they had created burgers with each of our names. There was the... Well, uh, you guys were burgers. I was a Philly cheesesteak. You were a Philly cheesesteak. So, look. So, you see the burgers, Caridi Ghost Pepper, Bur uh, Ghost Pepper Burger... And they said that, uh, I says, is that ghost pepper hot? And the guy said, hotter than the hinges of hell, is what, <laughs> what he told me. That would have hurt, but I would have liked to have tried that. Me too. And then the Hoppy Blue Jam was a blue cheese burger Ooh. down there. That was that was good. And then the uh, the Mountaineer Mushroom Swiss, of course, goes without saying. And then the other one was the How sa Steak Sandwich. It's the uh, How's the Philly? Mm -hmm. How's the Philly Steak Sandwich? Good talking with those dudes. And the Greenbrier, what about the Greenbrier, the Greenbrier bags. Dairy? We left. Our last thing we did was the Greenbrier Dairy. Got a big cow. <laughs> and um, we got milkshakes from there. And I got uh, the cheese. You didn't hit the cheese yet, have you? Not yet, but I, I got it. Yeah. They made us American cheddar. They made us butter cheese. And they make their own mustard. Right here in West Virginia, right there at the Green Bay. Milkshake right was strong. I'm a milkshake. little mint Oreo, mint Ooh. mint Oreo. I want straight chocolate. They cows. They rank the they, the cows are in Frankfurt. About 20 minutes away from where they were serving. I mean, you get like 
if your cow is 20 minutes away from where you're getting the milkshake, yeah. strong probability, pretty good. Yeah. I mean, we're not talking about any synthetic cow, you know, down there. <laughs> and then uh, Brittany Masters and the folks from the communities and schools. So there's Brittany to the right, obviously. And that was the, that was the uh, organization that we raised the dollars for. The Communities and Schools program is unbelievable. In short, they try to take kids that may potentially be overlooked, and they help them in so many different ways, mentoring them, identifying them early so that they have an opportunity to get through the educational system and blossom. Because if you don't, and if they don't, then chances are they'll never know what's out there in front of them. Tony, I know we each of us talked to her for a long time, and she was really passionate, Brad, about what she's doing. And as we talked about, so many of these children in West Virginia, not just West Virginia, but that's a state we're most familiar with, coming from environments where education is not valued, uh, the parents or parents not getting them up to go to school, uh, they're not reinforcing their homework or what they need to do, and, and so these kids fall far behind. And the teachers alone can't be expected to do everything. So this community program uh, enlists people to, to help sort of fill in the gaps and pull them along. Yeah, she was great. I thought she did a wonderful job of explaining the need and where those dollars go and, and and how it helps those kids yep. in Greenbrier County and, and across the state, but this specifically in Greenbrier County, tremendous, tremendous impact they're making. So that was awesome. Thank you, everyone, for coming out in Greenbrier County. We've got more of these uh, things coming up. In we had a good, it was, I know that what you all say about me, that I don't get out and I don't talk to people, but uh, I talked to everybody. You did. Friday and Saturday. You and did. I was so uplifted. Mm -hmm. so That's uplifted a good word. Yeah. Because, you know, we... You just get sometimes with what I do, you get sort of caught up in the controversy and stuff. It was just really, really nice to be with very genuine, warm people, Brad. Yeah. It just felt so welcoming. It was it was invigorating. So many great people, with. huge Mountaineer fans down there, yeah. right? Listeners to the podcast. Just I, I thought it was a great, you know, over two days, twenty four hour period. We were there. Awesome visit to uh, Ronsford. I thought. Yeah. From the text line. Oh, hold on, real quick. I don't know if you saw this. This was, you know, Hoppy talks about getting out and talking to the folks, which he did. I thought he was very social, did a tremendous job, but he also had his own security crew <laughs> that is blocking people off from getting to him. I thought that was a bit much. And you much. had to usher one at a time in there so you didn't get crowded, but his own security crew. Had How security. about the law enforcement dudes there? <laughs> they were, were awesome. Great guys. They were awesome. Now, did one of those time. guys play football for Tommy. Rick? Played Tommy for Rich. played for Rich. Played played for Rich. Rich. Was a linebacker mixed over into fullback a little bit there? Yeah, we had a great <laughs> great conversation about old school Rich back at Glenville. Yes, so yes. the law enforcement guys, they were tremendous. Yeah. That was great. Uh, texter says, just embrace Colorado. It's an instant rivalry. Country Roads versus Rocky Mountain High. They can play for the John Denver Trophy. Now, really? that's something. Think about that. Why wouldn't you, when Colorado, West Virginia play, play for the John Denver? Well, I, I think you go further. I mean, the, there's the connection to Texas Tech, so it basically becomes a commander-in-chief trophy where it's got it's three <laughs> different prongs, right? I mean, you got Texas Tech's got a John Denver he involvement went to school as there. well. Yeah, yeah. so commander-in-chief type of trophy, John Denver-in-chief trophy. Gary from Beckley writes, kudos to Kevin Jones. I feel he's elevated himself to the greatest of all-time Mountaineer squad. He puts them in there with Jerry West, Rod Thorne, Ron Fritz Williams, and Deshaun Butler. Yeah. Mm, Jerry West, bar pretty high. Kevin Kevin was really good in that TBT. How Both about, nights, I mean, he's a dude. You know who else was pretty good? How about Heard That? Oh. They Sound got a shot. They got a shot. They do have a shot. Well, sure they do. Hey, Hoppy, did you have anybody on from Heard That on your show today? I had Travis Jones. I'm efforting uh, John Elmore. Oh, good. Did you hear what he said, Brad? He's efforting John Elmore. You know, what I'm gonna, you know what I'm doing? Are you efforting? I'm going to come in and get him tonight. That's fine. I'm going to spite Hoppy. That's a, I, just gonna, I mean, is it, isn't it about time? No, I It's all I'm about not... Hoppy. I think that's one thing we learned this weekend. What? On this trip. What? It's all about Hoppy. When we got there at that house and we went in there and you said, hey, uh, Tony, my bag's in the back of my car. Would you get that <laughs> for me? And, and then when you said, and make it quick, I thought that was – I thought that was totally, <laughs> totally out of character. You thought that was I uh, thought that was a bit for? much. Get that and make it quick. By the way, where's my water? <laughs> where's my where's my lemon water? Uh, texter, I get a small dose 
of that West Virginia camaraderie almost daily here in Chicago. I'm almost always wearing some type of WV gear, and I now expect someone to comment on it daily. These are random people I pass by on the sidewalk or stores. For example, today I'm walking down North Broadway and in my Chicago neighborhood, Lakeview, when a young man I was passing on the sidewalk said loudly, Go Mountaineers! <laughs> per Scopes, there's always a West Virginia connection. Again, enjoy your weekend. Hey, three guys, Jim in Preston County, I loved the Quincy Wilson episode. I will never forget watching the run. When you put your shoulder in the defender and hurdle him five yards, epic. <laughs> Great episode. Wish him nothing but the success, except when he plays my West Liberty Hilltoppers. Thanks for all you do, even for Hoppy when he decides to show up. Hmm, that was nice. This is Jim in Charleston. I just wanted to let you know that Taylor, Tyler, Tucker, County, Kennedy, Consolidated is alive and well. I've read some good articles from him this week in the Gazetteer Mail, and in Friday's paper, readers got to see his smiling face. Good to have some new blood at the paper. Are they still publishing? I thought they... Did they... They moved the, they moved the Sunday paper to Saturday. Oh, but they still publish the paper. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I, they, don't, they're, they don't publish every day, but the big thing was they just went from Sunday. The Sunday paper's on Saturday now. Oh, I got you. Wait, what, does Taylor have a column or something with this picture in there? I don't know. I did not see it. I'm you sorry. ever noticed that when you were like young and those guys always had their picture in their column? And then when you saw them in real life, you realized the picture had been taken 31 years earlier and that's, they looked nothing like that picture. That's actually kind of what my picture looks like on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Texter, Ben from Pittsburgh, with the bar exam being done, I decided to look up what to expect in the officer training school. I'll be going through the Army JAG Corps. It appears it's quite possible I'll be encountering a wild boar during land navigation. So I was hoping Scopes, as an expert boar slayer, could give me some insights on how to defeat a boar without a firearm. Did he just drop in that he went to law school? I was like, like by the way. And now he's going to the JAG Corps. Well done, Ben. And he's going boar hunting, but he might not be able to... Uh, Brand, Use a Brand, fire how did how do you think Tony was yeah, successful? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead. I mean, Tony, you can jump in and give your thoughts since you were the actual on the hunt. But I would say is the the way to do it if you want to follow Tony's blueprint is just make sure this thing is sleeping or or been heavily drugged before you get there. Yeah, and then you'll have a good chance of making sure your shot hits directly and achieves the goal. Yeah, exactly. Fair. Yeah, yeah fair. fair. I mean, he's running around, but then the, then the sedative kicked in. Yeah, we're just getting him. He's taking a nap. Down. And go ahead. Multiple shots. Missed. Saw a thing yesterday. <laughs> Got an elephant. What? Elephant uh, elephant ran away from the circus <laughs> in uh, Calabria, Italy. Oh my god! In Calabria, province of Cal- province of Calabria. It's all over the news. If you look up, look up elephant, Italy circus, you'll see it come up. So the elephant takes off in Calabria. I mean, it's a small little town. Sure. Well, and away. and he went to a supermarket parking lot. He was walking right down the road. See it hop? Yeah. Big old elephant. And uh, and, and finally, the <laughs> folks from the zoo, or no, the folks from the circus. Walking down the street. Yeah, just walking down. They got video. People in their cars just laughing like heck. Giganta. They said Giganta. Elefante. Yeah. So anyway. Elefante. It's good. Uh, good. A mutual friend of ours that's in Calabria right now. We'll have to reach out and see if he saw the elephant. Yeah. Seriously, somebody's driving down the street, and the elephant is the elephant just took the exit. <laughs> he's walk, going down he walked the road. to the supermarket. The elephant's not in a hurry. No. Good to see everybody. Leisurely stroll. Texter, hey, Didn't three have a guys. show to get to that night out of the circus. <laughs> just anywhere to go. I'm off today. It's Tuesday. <laughs> I'm off today. <laughs> take, those damn, take those damn peanuts. I'm done. Uh, hey, guys, greetings from my annual summer vacation in Indian Beach, North Carolina. As you can see, I have my three guys beach survival kit. Nothing better than watching the waves roll onto the sand while sipping on some Kerchival as I'm munching on a Go Mart <laughs> fly rod and topping it off with the perfect peanut butter to chocolate re- ratio Reese's. My favorite time of the year because I know when I get home, the anticipation will be riding high with football season. <laughs> Here's to you guys efforting to episode 800 and beyond. Roll tribe, and let's go Mountaineers. Ryan from Bridgeport. Can we set up? Those those Kirchvilles look cold, too. That's nice. <laughs> hey, uh, quick note. Ran into three guys listener Joe at Dick's Sporting Good yesterday. What were you doing there? Shopping. <laughs> For your upcoming trip? <laughs> Shopping. We'll stop. We'll stop by Joe. Hey, three guys. Big three guys listener. Awesome. Hey, thanks, Joe. Yeah, he thank worked you. there, or was he just shopping? No, it works there. 
Oh, oh he's a worker. Oh, yeah. Oh, very Works good. Hmm. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Guys, I'm sorry for the long text. I hope it's worth a read. So do I. I graduated with Quincy, and on Saturday mornings, I was calling WWVA, where the late George Kellis hosted a talk show to hype the most dominant high school player I've ever seen. This is our baseball picture from June of 1990. Check out his baseball pants. There's Quincy. It was never in doubt what his destiny would be. He had big calves back then. Quincy. As you also mentioned, two other good men, John S. Marshall, where the S stands for service. Absolutely the goat of insurance agents. Nothing like the guys that Tony <laughs> disparages from time to time. True. And the we other, ran into a couple insurance agents oh, during yeah. our visit. Yeah, we did. Greenbrier County. Yeah, we did. They talked to him? I, I think, I don't know. What's that? Did they, did they talk, talk to, to you? you? Oh, I talked to him. Okay. The, the, dude with the, the blue, that fence? The dude with the blue shirt. The well, guy with well, the blue bonnet. blue one was golden blue. I don't know which. Anyway, I... The other was TV Ted Valentine. My buddy Corey and I started working at Woodview Golf Course in New Cumberland, 1996. We're making $2 an hour cash with unlimited golf and food. Ted used to live, this is Teddy Valentine's talk about, Ted used to live in Weirton, spent his summers playing in a skins game with retired mill workers. Ted started taking us up to the scrambles as his ringers and at a tournament in Wellsburg. Drunk competitors started harassing us. That was right after Ted had assessed Bobby Knight, not one but two, but three technicals in one game. Is that true? Yeah, it is true. Oh, that was a huge thing. Gave him, gave him led to three? His de- led to his demise in the, big, uh, in the Big Ten. Ted didn't work in the Big Ten after that. He booted him. All three justified? Oh, absolutely. Ted's never missed a call. Anyway, Ted walks over to these guys who are drunk and harassing us and said, I'm going to end up in the media again, this time for whipping your asses if you don't stop harassing these three young men. They never said another word, and we won the tournament. One more thing. Quincy may have gotten some NIL money in 1999. Mountaineer Park bought Woodview and hired a new GM, the local state senator who just happened to be instrumental in expanding gambling. There are some that felt this perhaps was a political NIL deal. I was transferred against my wishes out of the pro shop and onto the grounds crew. At first, I thought maybe it was political because my grandfather had run against him for mayor of Weirton and lost in 91, but then I realized something much bigger was at play. My replacement was none other than Quincy Wilson. My shift on the grounds crew was usually over by the time Quincy got to work. And let's just say we spent a lot of time having fun and hitting golf balls on the range, and no one ever gave Quincy a hard time about it. So Quincy got the call into the pro shop. This guy got booted back down to the grounds crew. Well, you know. Probably for Quincy's buoyant personality, probably sold some of those highly priced shirts in that uh, that, uh, golf. Probably Quincy was the guy who could run the ball. Yeah. Uh, texter, uh, he also said it was great to uh, hear him on the posca- podcast. Excited he's uh, back. All right, here we go. Texter, hello. I loved the summer series. I've been lucky enough to get some of the Kerchevale three times, and in West Virginia, Seneca Lake, Ohio, and Lake Anna, Virginia. Here are a couple pictures sharing it with my brother-in-law Brian at each lake on pontoon boats. Of course, excellent. I hope you guys are still uh, efforting to get the Kerchevel to the northern panhandle. Robin Benwood. He's got three different pictures of him and his bro wow. drinking Kerchevel all over the doggone place. Good work. Well done. How'd they get that in Virginia? Good work, Rob. They drove it down there. He picked it up here and then went down to the lake and brought it with oh, them. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought he bought yeah. it in Virginia. Nice. Very nice. Excellent. Thank you. Haven't heard from this cat in a while. Our boy Jason in Tulsa. Hey, guys. On my way to Vegas again while enjoying the Quincy Wilson episode. I saw him on campus once. I remember thinking his quadriceps were like giant redwoods. It looked like he could leg, leg press a full-grown bush elephant. By the way, on my previous trip to Elephant's Vegas, big on the show, big today. By the way, on my previous trip to Vegas, I cashed in event number seventy-four of the World Series of Poker by finishing five hundred and thirteen out of five thousand two hundred and seventy-two players, and I also cleaned up in the cash games. So WV was well represented. Nice work. Yeah. I also to took Brian Harmon at 150 to one to win the open. Oh, oh my! Oh. So that worked out pretty well. And he says tongue cluck. <laughs> 150 to one. That's right. Nice there's hit. A, there's a wow. slip. There's a slip. Nice hit, Brad. That's a that's a nice hit. 
Yeah. I mean, how do you, that's just a like West Virginia guy, like just play it. Good job. Yeah. That's already says Jason avoiding, wow. avoiding Vince, Vince Wolfork, juking Sean Taylor and trucking Brandon Merriweather on my way to the end zone. Yep. That's yeah. Pretty good. Love the show. Did he bet twenty five dollars? That what he bet? Yeah. Well, so what he? Thirty seven hundred. Whoo! That's our guy. Nice as you're headed to Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, you're probably just shut it down, come home, staked you. Yeah. Uh, Jason continues. P.S. Post travel update. While I was getting off the plane, the guy sitting next to me decided to finally ask, "Are you a WVU guy?" Seeing that I was wearing a WVU fleece and a WVU <laughs> shirt, I said. That'd really be something if I wasn't, wouldn't it? <laughs> he said, dude, I'm a frog, TCU person. To this day, hands down, the best tailgating experience I've ever had was in Morgantown. I did shots of moonshine out of a bowling ball, <laughs> and that was somehow the worst part. All I could say to him was, well, yeah, we're professionals. <laughs> Very good. Oh, <laughs> uh, boy. <laughs> bowling ball. Hey, three guys. The use of the word big, as in Big Ten, Big 12, and cardinal directions is a terrible naming scheme for leagues and conferences today. How long until Brett Yormark shops the naming rights to the league around? Bucky's Athletic Conference, the GoMart <laughs> Premier League. The trophy would be a giant bronze big gulp, just spitball, and P.S., it's very quaint that Hoppy thought that the abbreviation of EDMF was G-rated. For his information, the following would also be correct. WTF, wait till Friday, <laughs> LMFAO, leave my Fritos alone, Ollie. <laughs> Love the show, Pete and Pensboro. I didn't. Uh, I, I did, understand. I didn't know. I mean, I, who would, I didn't right? Know. Pete and Pensboro is always good. Like, he'd be a P1 texter for quality and creative. That's really great. Right? I don't think Pete's his real name, though. Eh, probably not. Texter, Ronsiford is widely considered to be a French expression, meaning no power, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> big thanks to the big three for making it a glorious day to be a mountaineer. P.S. My lovely wife and I snuck out of town with the last two four pals of Kerchevel. Go get them, boys. That's our guy, T-Bone, right there. Yeah, Hop. that was oh, fun. Yeah. T-Bone and him. Roanoke. Uh, T-Bone's just terrific. Terrific. Yeah. Absolutely had a fun, fun time talking with him and his wife. They made all. They made the trip down to Roanoke, and uh, it was great. It was great. It was fun. Just a good day, fun. man. That was really cool. Everybody wanted to be there. Everybody was in a good mood. Yeah. Really good. Uh, Texter. Gentlemen, Logan from beautiful Greenbrier County. Great pleasure to have you guys down here this past weekend. Great talks with all of you. Uh, not just about WVU, but life in general. Definitely a summer moment I'll never forget. We hope to see you guys again. Thanks for everything you do. So there's Logan. Now, that's Logan there. Now, you knew him. You met him, right, Brad? Yeah. Yeah, talked extensively with Logan. Yes. Logan came early, stayed. Logan yeah. stayed. He did. He was, he was committed. He put time in. Thank he you, did. Logan. Thank you. He, I mean, he might be a football player because at times he was applying press coverage. He was great. Yeah, getting right up in there. Very involved in a local church there. Yeah. Probably told you about. He's also assistant manager over there at the Auto Zone. He is, of course. Or is he the manager? Oh, assistant. Assistant. Working his way. He used to work delivery. He was in charge. Now he's in charge. He's assistant manager. He's in charge of uh, the uh, commercial accounts. You know, also real quick, we had a, a chance to, to spend some time with the fine folks at Briar Garden. Well, oh. well mentioned on this show, Ross, Ross Meredith. And Meredith. <laughs> yeah, Holy. had a wonderful uh, veal broth over there that was nice. I was but so they sell, hungry. They sell curch of ale there. Yeah, so here, some good me, food oh. Ross brought out. Let me yes. tell you. Let me tell you this one, folks. Let me tell you this was a good one. <laughs> veal veal broth worth. So like another one of those. I tell you what. If you're a regular, you know that Hoppy had some wandering issues in our first two events. He just took off. When we were in Morgantown twice, she not once, but twice, <laughs> took off. Well, as you know, we had him captured this weekend. Couldn't go anywhere because right. I drove. Your vehicle. Right. So we do the event in, in the Sportsman's Tavern on Friday night. And that kind of, okay, wraps up. And I don't know what it was. It's about 10 o'clock now. And our boy Kerchival says, we're going to the Briar Garden. <laughs> and I looked at him like, well, excuse me? I think he said it twice. Yeah. Go to the Briar Garden. Go to, go to the Briar Garden. I went like, 
you're going to go to the Briar Garden? Like, you're not, you're not like getting us right now. Hey, let's get back to this place. I got to go to bed. So we go to the Briar Garden, which I love the vibe. I love yeah, that place. I told cool Ross, place. I told Meredith, I just love what they've done there. And it, um, it's fantastic. So Ross, great restaurant tour bar operator. We get there and he pulls the, the, the move that you have to do if you're the owner of an establishment. You go up and he says, can I get you guys, like you guys going to eat? You guys hungry? You, you guys yeah. hungry. Yeah. And then he basically says, let me take care. When right. the owner of the place says, let me take care of the order, you know, here it comes. Because it was great awareness because yes was the answer, <laughs> which is always the answer. Right. And we kind of looked at each other for a minute like, what do you want? And he goes, he immediately went hand up and said, I'll take care of it. I'll bring a little bit of everything. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Right? Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. You handle it. And he it was did. perfect. He it did was. handle it. So he brings it in. And my man has got this German sausage place in New York City that's been making sausages since 1930. Has this... Um, has this stuff brought in on a big sausage airplane, <laughs> just lands at Lewisburg, just a big sausage plane. Cold. Keeps it cold on the Keeps way Keeps it cold. But he may, he had he gave us several different things. But the veal, oh. the veal brought. A yeah. plus. With the mustard. With dip it in the mustard, a little dip in the mustard. Holy potato salad. Was that good? Strong. And then, Hop, you had you made friends there. Like, you were talking with some people from the Live Golf Tournament. the Live Golf. There were two people there from Live Golf because the Live Golf Tournament's this coming. This week. week. Right, one of Beth, Beth from Minnesota, of course. She was. That's one. right. Yeah, that's right. So speaking of food, so we crushed it. We crushed it there. I might, I might have hit it harder than either one of you, which is shocking. Yeah, is that about, possible? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, know about know. that. We were in there pretty good. Were you? Yeah. Okay, but it was because there was a lot of conversation. Because also at our table, former WVU assistant Paul Moran oh, under Paul's Bobby great. Bowden. So there was Paul's. Bo Schembechler, Woody Hayes, Bobby Bowden stories. So you were at Floyd times Schwartz, you were talking Walter. to Paul, and I'm diving in on that pretzel. Yeah, just cutting that thing up. It was good. It was just. Paul was awesome. Right, that eating, was great. Talking to people, having a broad, having a cold beer. I mean, it was really very so normal. unusual for you to actually you see. It's, for me to see you enjoying something, it was really special for me. <laughs> Normally, I don't. <laughs> no. Normally, you're all work, all busy all the time. You're nervous, putting lip, putting that lip balm on because you're nervous. I nervous think, tick. I think what happened? Finally, to see it chill out. It was. You did good. have fun. Oh, I had a great. Yeah, time. you had fun. Had a great time. Like Brad and I were standing looking at you going, look at her boy. He's actually having fun. <laughs> look at her boy. Look at her boy. Our boy's having fun. Well, I got, you know, I got in kind of a groove starting down at Ronsford. All right. Where's the next place we're going to? It was like college again. It know? was. Anyway. Glenwood. So that was, so we pounded food there. Up in Alderson, say hello. <laughs> and then Dave was, Alta, Dave was, took care of us. Alta Sam Black Church. <laughs> Rain out. How many? Rain. How many falls room? <laughs> how about the place we stayed? Beautiful. Whew. Beautiful. Yes. Right in Lewisburg. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was great. That was. That was how we feel like we should travel. <laughs> <laughs> Whether we ever will again, I don't know. But that's how it feels like it should be. <laughs> well, that is how I do travel. Oh, okay, You're sorry. the guy that's always looking for the next Motel 6. <laughs> well, that's the way I'll, I'll, respect. Respect. I'll do respect. Um, also, so we crushed the food there. And then Braden from Six Pence Pizza. Oh, oh my oh. gosh. On Saturday morning. So I ate at Briar Garden, and I, all I had was coffee. All I had was coffee Same. the next morning, and they put that little ma maple syrup. We probably should talk about that as yeah, well. Yeah, Alex brought that up. So I, it, well documented on this show, I get shamed for it all the time. I, I, I need to have stuff in my coffee, right, right, Hoppy, right? right. I'd, I'd like to wean off that, but haven't been able to yet. So I went up to the, the mountain table stand. Alex right there pulled out some of our coffee and was making me a cup, and then he had a little maple syrup there. He said, hey, try a little maple syrup in here. Now, didn't stir it. Didn't stir it in. A little treat at the bottom when you get there. Yeah. That was good, it just, man. It does, That's a, that it, was really good. This coffee, Mountaineer Morning, doesn't have bitterness to begin with, but mm. if there is any hint of it, it just takes that down there. Yeah. And it's not, like you're, it's not like you're drinking cereal milk. I'm just telling you, it's a perfect little thing. Next time you get black coffee, whatever black coffee, and obviously you can buy ours at episode800.com, but just sprinkle a little bit of maple syrup, just a drizzle of maple syrup, and don't do anything with it. And just play with that a little bit. It'll make it, uh, it'll make it special. So anyway, so I don't need anything. 
and now it's two o'clock the next day. <laughs> Last time I had eaten was about 1030 at night. So now it's two o'clock. So my fast was like 14 plus hours. My boy Braden brings in, well, Groover brought, Groover, our guy, our guy brought four pizzas over. And my boy over here, Brad, I mean, he's having a, he's having a conversation law with law enforcement, law enforcement we officials yeah, we were there, over there. And my boy Kirchhoff was sitting down. I said, Didn't well, wait. Hoppy might've Didn't said wait. like, I, it might be too much pizza. Here. I looked at him and said like, <laughs> oh really there's too much pizza i'll just tell you this by the time i was done there was four empty boxes yeah we ate it all. destroyed it well you weren't the only one eating how that. good was it now did it i awesome because i had had good. it before in april did i overhype awesome. it little sausage pepperoni did i overhype it at all? Oh, the crust was perfect great it was really good was really good so thanks six pence you know what we need to do this is what we need to do do you think there's any way when football season starts now, here we go you think there's any way he's gonna come up with an idea here on August? We got to when, try and put this in place. Now. When football season, this is, season, the this, day will this never is get what here. this is what happens. <laughs> the day Could have had this. Con- I, I know where he's gonna go. I know exactly what he's thinking. Probably should have said this in April. He's gonna say it in August. Go Here's ahead. what I'm thinking. Here, this, watch this. Because uh, yesterday I was walking Charles Barkley. If you look at fine looking Phils to the left of fine looking Phils on the University Evans Avenue side, there's right. a there's a lot a cement lot. Right, a big pl- area. Yeah, you go get my boy. <laughs> you go get my boy Sixpence. Have okay. him bring the pizza. Have him bring the pizza wagon up. Okay. You go to Roland Stove, the food truck. By the way, that truck was designed in Charlotte. Sells these burgers. Why couldn't you on game day bring those folks in there and set that thing up? We have to ask Phil. Why couldn't you set that stuff up in there, and then when folks come to Mountaineer games? They can go to the three. I'm going to call it the three guys food court, uh, and they can a they can idea. have a, ta- a pretty strong can, idea. They can have a taste of what every well, we because not everyone's going to get down to Greenbrier County. We can bring them up here and football Saturdays. They go over there, food area set up on University Avenue. We're fine. You know where I'm talking about. Uh, that's a, that's actually. Of course, that, it's a good idea. That's actually a good idea. A lot of times, you come up with stuff that may sound you can't execute. That's not bad. That's really good. No, we would just have that to pizza. Act. Those sandwiches, little Kirchavale. Yeah, the guy that owns Rolling Noon Kick, maybe get the coffee in there. That's good. That's the actually a good idea. That's a good idea. Actually. The guy that owns the Rolling Stove food truck. That's a good idea. His well, daughter lives. His daughter lives in in Morgantown. She like he could just drive the truck up when he comes up for the games. I don't know if he's got if that's a convenient thing, but right. That's not a bad idea. Well, thank you. That's not a bad idea. 475 episodes, you finally gave me I got a good idea. Got to get moving. Here's the, it's basically I think August. The, I, there, there is a challenge with it, though. <laughs> what? Well, because they make those pizzas from scratch. Yeah, right. And so you put in your order, and it was about 15 or 20 minutes, which is fine, you know, waiting for good food. Can I mean, can the Mountaineer fans who are walking to the game, can they stop and say, I yeah. want to get one of these delicious pizzas. Okay, it's going to be 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, because here's what you do. Here's what, here's you what. You picnic tables you, or something? No, so you pre-order, do, or, pre-order. Or, 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 pre-order. Just go right into Phil's then and buy you a couple shirts while you're waiting. <laughs> Look around, then come back out and your pizza's That would done. work. All right, that'll work too. All right, that'll work. All right, you got to see what the merchandise now, who do we have to, promotion. Now, who do we have to ask to see if we could make this well, happen? Uh, well, here's where things always fall down. Now, the execution of the idea is... Give it to Dave. Yeah, Give, it Dave. To yeah, Give it to Groover. Give Dave Groover on it. <laughs> Give it to Groover. Then it'll get done. He doesn't have a home. <laughs> just, I, think he did. I think he has a home. Well, I, it wasn't really firmly established. I asked him. I, ask him, I, I thought ask he Dave. established it quite well, and you're still sitting there like you're looking at a ghost for like... No, I asked, I asked Dave Groover. I said, where do you live? And that, that started like a 20-minute walk. <laughs> Can, and I, we never did get an exact answer. Have Jack clip that audio and send it today. That's that's Dave a, listens. I, that's a good idea by you. I'm stunned by that. <laughs> I knew there was food coming. I didn't know it was that. I mean, he thought about that a little. Dave's bit. already probably. You know what else we talked about down there, at Greenbrier County? Up, I don't know. Hey, uh, anyone bring up the Mothman down there in Greenbrier County? Nope. Mm-hmm. Nope. nope. Yes, they did. I had no Mothman conversations. I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> Texter. One person did. It was, but texter nope. Nate in Mount Airy, Maryland. I didn't hear any of it? Mount Airy, Maryland. Isn't that uh, Joe Alexander? Mount Airy, Maryland. I believe that's outside of Frederick. I no, believe. No, that's down on. No, you're thinking. Don't think North you're Carolina. North Carolina. North Carolina. You're thinking North Carolina. Mount Airy, Maryland. This is the Maryland version. <laughs> Everyone's got a Mount Airy. You know when I was. You were in my mind. 
Texter. Oh, there <laughs> Long time listener, first time texter. I made a visit to the land of confectionery goodness in Hershey with my family this weekend. We were perusing Chocolate World when suddenly I stumbled upon the mother load of Reese's. They had all kinds, regular, thin, crunchy, even some kind of plant-based version. I couldn't help but think every time I turned a corner, the frad would be there lurking, trying to stuff his pockets akin to Dana in a Red Bull store. However, the fine folks at Hershey must have decided that selling Reese's shapes out of season was blasphemous. No eggs, no trees, Mm. nothing. Surely one of you clowns knows someone up there to efforting to get this travesty corrected. I mean, it's the horse's mouth of Reese's, and they got no shapes. Got to get shapes in there. Surprising. Hershey's probably knows what they're doing. They got shapes. Well, as they said, I beg to differ if they don't have shapes. Nate's right. As the Reese's Best man once said, you, you got to get busy living or get busy dying. <laughs> Tremendous ratio in those. Gentlemen, peanut butter to chocolate ratio. Thank you all so much for the wonderful event at the Sportsman Tavern in Ronsford Saturday. My friend Barb and I enjoyed the atmosphere, and we appreciate each of you taking time to talk to us. The food and the coffee from Sixpence Pizza, Greenbrier Dairy Mountain Table was the top notch. I plan on coming back to the area in the near future and spend a full weekend exploring the area. Idea for a future, and this is on the stern wheeler during the reg- – we tried to do the stern wheeler. I wanted to do the stern wheeler. I wanted to go up and down the river on the stern wheeler. What happened? They said that you can't go up and down the river on a stern wheeler. The stern wheeler's got to be parked. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. And then so then we got into talking, well, do we bring the P.A. Denny from Pen- from Pittsburgh down there and go up and down the river? Because P.A. Denny got no problem going up and down any river. They just go up and down the river. So that's why the sternwheeler thing didn't happen, because we want a big-ass sternwheeler <laughs> with like 120 people on it going up and down the water. Why would you want to be in a boat and just sit? No. We want to go up and down the water. Is that too hard? Apparently. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be the verdict we got. So we're open. End up two guys in a rowboat and a canoe. So that's why that then didn't, didn't happen. If we do something in Charleston, well, we're supposed to go back to Greenbrier County. Yeah, we're talking. Ross about wants us to come. Back. I, I know. I, I, I know. was a blast. That Who's was that great. text from? You didn't read who that was from. P. One Jennings. Yes. He he is the only person. Listen to this. That was our third event, and he's been to all four of them. <laughs> Let me say that again. He, he's that right. was. Do you know this? He's that right. was our third event, and he's been to all four of them. That's a riddle. Because like a hundred years ago, Brad and I on a Saturday morning before a Mountaineer game said, "Hey, test case. Just for the heck of it, we're gonna hang out at Phil's on Saturday morning before the game." And Jennings came, and he was there. That's also how we got involved with Spruill. Correct. Mark Spruill. One-time producer of this program. One-time producer. And that's so that was like, there was like nine people during the course of an hour or two showed up, maybe more. And Jennings was one of them. Jennings is like the fifth Beatle, you know? I mean, Oh, yeah, he's definitely Pete Best. Awesome. Thanks, yeah. Jennings. Plus, he had one of those nice efforting shirts on from episode800.com. I did not. It's stitched. I did not know that the efforting T-shirt the efforting is stitched. It's not like silk screened on there. Not like, yeah. Do you see that? It was stitched on there. It was yeah. stitched on like, uh, what do they call that? Tackle twill. <laughs> <laughs> I got a ding when you did that. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I'm still getting it. Texter. Wait a minute. This is, who is this from? It says, uh, oh. from Jack. What's he got? Longest three guys episode ever by my quick perusal. <laughs> one hour, 48 minutes. Currently, we're at one hour, 47 minutes. So oh, we got to do two minutes. Hold your water. Here's another one. Hello. I met Brad at Daniel's a few weeks ago oh. while I was picking up my suit for my daughter's wedding. The suit was fit perfectly. Due to travel logistics, the groomsmen were unable to get their tuxes from Daniel's. As you can see by the photo to the groom's father's tux, didn't quite fit. The jacket was as bad as the pants. After an emergency trip to Daniels, he was as good as new. I just wanted to give a shout-out to Daniels and fine-looking Phil for saving the day. How about that? Signed by Tom in New Martinsville. Sure. So, I mean, that's what – so, so, 
You see what happened? Do you see what happened? Yeah. They went and got their tuxes someplace else, and they get back, and my man is wearing crabbers. He's wearing those uh, those capris that we were talking about with Garrett earlier. And so he runs over to Phil's, and Phil's guy, is it, would that be Harry? Could have been Harry. Could have been Harry. Yeah, multiple, Ta- I mean, multiple tailors. He's got, he's got world international tailors. They fixed him. He said, P.S., we need to effort getting Kerchevel to baristas in New Martinsville. That's a great story about Phil's. Two kind of people in the world. People want to help you, and people don't want to help you. Who wants to help you? Phil Tom, helps. Tom walked in the store one day. Yeah. And I'm, I'm over there folding shirts. I was on the left side of the store as you walk in, folding stacks, making sure they were nice and neat. And he looks over. I can tell someone's looking. So I, I look over at him, and he's laughing. And he, true, and to God, he said, you really do work here. I thought you guys were just joking around when you said that. You were there. Of course well, you were there. Help somebody. Put some yeah. shift in. Well, I could, what do you need? We'll help yeah, you out. Well, sure. Last text. Sure, sure. Last text of the longest three guys ever from what we're being told. Does Jack have somewhere to go? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> He's got to be back to school in three weeks. Is that, is that Yeah, he's going to be late. This one keeps going. Scopes, spreads, and hoppy. Soon I will draft my fantasy football squad for the season. I was thinking of the naming the team, the Fly Rod Slim Jims, out of respect for the show. Well, thank you. I was wondering if you guys had any better suggestions for clever names. Also, do any of you play fantasy football or have a yearly league that you participate in? Thanks, Jeremiah and Stonewood. Fly Rod Slim Jims. I think that's a, that's a great name. One. Fly Rod Slim Jims is a great name. I do not I do not participate. Three Clowns would be another one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I play daily. Excuse fantasy. me? I play daily. I can't I can't do the season long because I wouldn't be able to show up on our Saturday broadcast because I'd be, be too invested in my tight end off waivers that week and would miss <laughs> all our stuff. But daily on Sundays where you just get up, you pick your team on Sunday. Oh, really? And you go to work and you reset it the next Sunday. And the Sunday. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's less overall commitment, easier to do on a week by week. Some weeks I may miss it. You're not worried it. about Wednesday. i got to trade uh, somebody. No. i got to get a no. uh, yeah. yeah, so oh. I play daily fantasy. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, I don't. I don't have time. I mean, once football starts, I don't even know where I am. So, no, I don't do that. But it would be good. I mean, I know you know, you learn all the players that way. It keeps I know, helps you keep making a little money. It's not about players. It's about well, making a little money. I get it. I'm trying to win money each week. I understand. Week. He's talking about naming players. Yeah. I'll take a little cash on that out of DraftKings. Thank you. <laughs> um, so. I was just playing for fun. It's fun. I'm making money. So, it's. This is uh, the end of the. Uh, this is the end of the show. We are so early that we have to go. But um, so this is the last day of July. So camp starts Wednesday. They go to they go to meet tomorrow. Wednesday they're on the field. Neil's doing his first presser Thursday. So we're gonna shortly start doing two a week. Shortly start doing two a week. They won't go this long. But we'll shortly start doing two week. I don't know if it's this week or next week. I'll have to figure it out. Okay. Um, apparel, coffee, and a big bag of Skittles available on our website at eight, episode 800.com. That's episode like hoppy. Like Skittles might not be there just yet. We're trying to Definitely get coffee and, and gear. Yeah, we got gear. We got gear all over the stuff. We got, we got all kind of gear, coffee. Again, um, tis the season. And we will effort to uh, – Kercheville, by the way, is out. New batch was just done, right? All Bill over, over at Chestnut Brew Works popped a new batch. It's all over the state now yeah. again. So if you've been searching for Kercheville, let us know. Um, but it's, it should be – it should have been distributed post-haste. Special thanks to uh, Garrett Green for coming in. Mm-hmm. He was presented by Daniel's Men's Store of Morgantown. Stop by and see Fine Look and Phil. Plus, I'm going to ask Phil if we can use that parking lot on game day. Tremendous Bring in idea. a food truck and things like that. Sure That'd be awesome. Pizza. That's what he wants. All his clothes to smell like pizza. That was worse smells. Okay. It was that pizza. That was good. It was good pizza. Three guys brought to us by the Burdett Camping Center. Burdett Camping. Visit them at BurdettCamping.com. That's BurdettCamping.com. Burdett RV right out there in the parking lot. I'll just spend the night on Friday. Yeah, they're ready to help out the pizza. Fire that oven up about 7 a.m. Yeah, could do that. Three guys brought to us by Comax Business Systems. Visit them at ComaxWV.com. That's ComaxWV.com. 
25 years taking care of what you need. Digital phone systems, competitively priced, free estimate, ComaxWV.com. Unbelievable folks at GoMart. We had two stops at GoMart yeah. this weekend. Uh, folks, you're just terrific. Tremendous. Get your rewards card, save your money on food and gas. Someone spotted us and didn't they? Talk, talk to some listeners at our second stop on the way back. There's our first stop at the world famous one in Flatwoods, Flatwoods of yeah. course. International headquarters. Stop there on the way down. Then on the way back, hit the one in Summersville as we're coming through. Met some nice listeners there. Yeah. Ran in some West Virginians coming back from Myrtle Beach. Of That's right. Long, long trip. Yeah. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales. In St. Albans, they sell family fun. Visit LouWendellMarineSales.com, the premier pontoon boat dealer in the state of West Virginia. Well, let me see here. How long is this bad boy? Well, he's pretty close. Hour 54. Jeez. Well, Garrett was really good. He was. And we hadn't done text in a long time. They won't be this long going forward, but that was it. Next time, we're just going to do a telephone. <laughs> For Garrett, Senator Hoppy. Our producer, Jumpin' Jack Carlson, maybe he told us it's the longest show ever because he's got to go to the bathroom. He's been sitting back over there. We're out. Be good. See you all.